touch anything. <laughs> it's the greatest find yet. Nothing compares to it. It's definitely something you should hear. This is The Real Deal with Larry Lawton. Welcome to The Real Deal with me, Larry Lawton, and I have a special guest today I'm going to get to in a minute. You're going to learn a lot about, I guess, frauds, insurance, and stuff like that uh, with my guest. Before I get started, I want to let everybody know uh, ashtrays are in, cutters are in, everything is in, the website's being changed. Uh, go check it out. We have so much stuff. That ashtray's there. Pretty cool ashtrays, huh? Very cool. Brand new. Uh, you you know, I, I give all guests stuff. That's, like, a, that's the greatest name, Crooked Diamond. I love is, is that a great yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we, we're going to talk about that, too, because we're going to talk about what we did with, uh, what we want to do with that glass thing. you know, see what you think about that. I like to ask people who are in older. I ain't going to say you're old, but, you know, closer yeah. to my age than somebody, who, someone like Nick, you know, 27. Uh so anyway, we got uh, a friend of mine, Brad, on, who's, a, 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 again, most of my friends are ex-cons, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay about that. First of all, thank you, Oliva. Oliva Cigars, they are our sponsor. They've been with us. They are great guys. Uh, I Listen, no matter what happens, I, the CEO, Corey, Fidel, COO, the, all of them, C, CFO, all good, good people. Got to know them all, been to Nicaragua and, and into the fields and where my cigars are made. We got a whole thing coming out. So that's going to be really exciting, really, really exciting. Uh, but now, let's get right into this. This is crime, stuff like that. You know, I, I met Brad through, obviously, the channel. Then we start communicating and get back and forth. And I find out, Brad, well, Brad's story is going to be great. You can hear about Brad's story. And then... I, I'm always intrigued by interesting stories and people who've changed, uh, did something different, you know, moved on, but has that experience and is willing to tell people about it. Because most people don't. You know that, Brad, right? Sure. Yeah. They, they, they're you, embarrassed. You know, they're, they're embarrassed. Or, yeah. It, you know. Most of them are embarrassed or something like that. Or they just want to get... And I, and I respect that, too. My story is what makes me help people and also... Believe it or not, I rehabilitate myself all the time. You know, you keep, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to lose my life again over that. You know, I mean, I was in for such a long time and experienced so much that phew, I don't even wish that on enemies. You know, I really don't. But uh, it's, 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 so Br it's Brad was in the, ins let's call it this way. Okay. Brad is 52, two years old, 53. 53. He's 53 years. He looks great. They always, you know, they come in here and they look younger than me. Yeah. Fuck. No. <laughs> So Brad, Brad is 53 uh, years old. Uh, he's from Central Florida, that's all I'll say. Uh, he has a great story. He did some time, not hard time like I did, but he did time, and he opened his eyes, and he's going to get into that. And he was in the insurance business, and that's where we're going to go. Give him the basis of your business from, like, how did you get into the insurance business to begin with as a young guy, and where were you from originally? I was, uh, I was born in Wisconsin. Right into the, yeah, I was born yeah. in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, wow. You remember, wow. That's far away from Miami Beach. It definitely is. We went from West Milwaukee to North Miami Beach. I mean, talk about two yeah. polar opposites. Bring, bring it in. Yeah, two yeah. polar yeah. opposites. Okay, there you go. Uh, though, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade anything for the way I grew up, meaning growing up in Miami at the time I did in the 80s and the early 90s, uh, it was it was, it was fun. But it was also, I got a chance to see a lot of stuff, a lot of money being made. Yeah, I was one of those guys making and, that money. And I wanted it. I mean, yeah. that, that was it. I, I so wanted, what age did you move to Miami? I was seven. Okay, so really you grew up in Miami. I grew and, up. and Miami Beach, where? No, North Miami Beach. Oh, like in yeah. Surfside, uh, no, Bell Harbor? No, no more, uh, more towards uh, Aventura. Oh, okay, even though, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aventura is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was just in there. Uh, a friend of mine has a condo over there. Beautiful, man. In Aventura. I didn't know how expensive they got. They're ridiculous. Crazy, exactly. So you move there, you and your family, brothers uh -huh. and sisters? I have a brother, an older brother. He's 57. Just the two of you? Just the two of us. Good family, we have parents uh, together, that kind of stuff? My parents were together my whole life. And... Um, it's funny because it, now that I'm older and I get a chance to see, I had a chance to take care of my mother. 
And I respect, of course. I heard, yeah, I knew that, and I respect. I, this. it's like I wanted my mother to have everything that she didn't have while I was while she was raising me. My dad was frugal. My dad was really frugal. My dad was the kind of guy that said, "If you, if I didn't have it when I was a kid, you're not going to have it. You're going to work for it." So. I grew up in such an area with wealth, and, you know, you're seeing all these fancy cars and fancy boats and this and What'd that. What'd your parents and do? What'd your dad My mom? dad was in the insurance business. Oh, so, okay, oh, that's yeah. how you got your uh, family. Uh, family business. My dad was been in the insurance business 45 years. He's passed away since 2019. Mm. Um, right there. He, don't, he didn't teach me the business. He wouldn't teach me the business. He would teach me how to run the office, but he would not teach me how to sell insurance. He, I believe that it was distasteful for him to show me how he's making a living. Oh, he thought it wasn't like the way they did things back in those days. It, he, it was distasteful. I mean, he, he did exactly what I did, but he just did it on a much smaller scale for a much longer time. Never got in any trouble. Just he was in it for the marathon. I was in it for a sprint. Yeah, well, and, obviously, you know... We, we, you're even you're you're ten years younger than me, and every decade you'll see people get more. I think more and more. I call them the now generation. Now mm -hmm. they want everything now, right now. Yeah, I don't want to work. I don't want it. I know I can do it. I want it now. You know, instead of getting that experience and learning, learning. Usually, all the, time. the things you get now, those things that you grab now, you never keep. You never hold on to until you start working for it. Figuring out, wow, this costs some money, or this, this, this is well, you know, the, the, to me. there's a saying there, you know, uh, if you give something for free, people don't understand the worth. No. Matter of fact, in my program that I developed, uh, the court system themselves wanted me to charge more because they go, they want to let people know, listen, this is going to cost something. You know what I mean? Even though it was all my, to me, and I, I, I set the price, uh, they, I could have been higher. Uh, but it was just, I'm thinking from the inmate standpoint, well, why do you want to hurt people more? You know, that's sure. how I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking at it as, no, well, you need to make it worth value so they, they appreciate it. I don't know how true it is with some people, and we could care less, you know, or but some people, you know, obviously with, do. With me, it was. With me, when I started working, I appreciated a hell of a lot more. What age did you start working? 19. You didn't work up until 19? No, that's when I started the insurance business. Well, oh, I, mean, did I started you... working at uh, 13, bagging groceries at Publix. There you go. What, and how long did you do that? For? A couple of years. And from there, I went to, you know, waiting tables in high school. And See, I love that. that. Yeah, you guys, you know, waiting car, like you said, uh, waiting tables. My, my dad was the kind of guy that said, don't come home without a job. Oh, oh my dad was, a, you hit 18 and you didn't have a job, you're out of the house. Yeah. My, he's like, you go get a job today and don't come home without a job. So he he put, you know, he was a, he was a jerk off, I'll tell you the truth. But, it, but, he's, he, it, but he, he, he instilled he, things in you yes. to this day that are good. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we all look at our dads and moms and, and, and think, you know, why they do things. First of all, I tell young people, first of all, you're, you're not born with instructions on your ass when you come out and how to raise you. No. So, and our parents make mistakes. But the one thing we realize is they want the best for you. That your dad, whether you think or not, he's teaching you all those things because he wants you to be better. You could think, oh, he's just a jerk. He didn't have it. He don't want anybody. Down deep, he, he's think of how much effort it took him to tell you, keep telling you, and doing stuff. Put a roof over your head. Fed you. Put you know food in your body. Mm -hmm. Put you to school. Whatever it is. Made you go to school. I tell people, the first thing I tell young people, Brad, is... They'll sit and talk to me about, you know, how shitty their life is. Their mom's dead. You know, mom's a junkie. Dad's in jail. Whatever it is. And I say, hold on. I look at them. He's well fed. Intelligent. I usually ask people to read a, read a sentence or read a paragraph, and I see it. And then we talk about the paragraph so I know they truly understand something. Mm -hmm. So they're comprehending. Right. I said, close the book. I said, don't talk to me about your parents again. Go, what do you mean? I go, somebody made you read. You could read. That means they made you go to school. You weren't in a basket. Like I know kids who were going in a, a shopping cart and, and being raised by street, you know, by someone yeah. on the street. Yeah. And there's no such thing as school. I mean, even how to read and comprehend and speak. And, and I, I just talked to you. you. Don't look like you were, you know, you're starving. Obviously, you're out intelligent enough to be able to read and comprehend. There comes that time in your life where it stopped. It's not the parents' fault. 
you already should know right from wrong. Yeah, they're fuck ups. So that's a great lesson. Yes. Rome, you know, Sublime the band. Mm -hmm. They're friends of mine. They're okay. Very good friends. So I interviewed him many, many, many times. You had to look at it. Rome, the head singer of Sublime with Rome, great guy. Uh, he self taught, self everything. He left his house at 16, lived in his van. I mean, and his dad was a drug addict in and out of jail. And he was told, he goes, no, that, he, you know, we've come to grips, you know. I knew he was a piece of shit and all that and all that in the morning. But now I look at it because he has kids. Uh -huh. He's my son's age. And he, uh, he says, he taught me what not to do. I was just going to say that. Yes. That's how I learned to become a good father. If you talk to my daughter, I'm, I'm the greatest. Because the good things your dad kept, you kept. The shitty things, maybe like we were hit with belts or whatever, you know, we were. We yeah. were but the, the things that weren't good, you discard. Yeah. But all that good stuff, even the fuck ups, that's not, it didn't do good to me, how it worked. You talk to your friends, you know, before you know it, you really become better and better. But that's mm -hmm. how I try to young, tell young people, Brad, to break that cycle of either poverty or abuse or whatever you have somebody's got to break that cycle I, somewhere it, along the line exactly and my dad once again like you said he taught me what not to do and, and that to me is so important i mean and, and we we forget that you know we forget oh my dad was an asshole my mom was an ass stop one sec think that they put a roof over your head that can you read you're intelligent obviously you are no they're not yes they, they might have did things wrong but there's a lot right there my dad used to say to me, Brad, I, I never had a book to open. There was no book on telling me how to be a dad. I didn't have a father. So my, his, his older brother was his, like his father. And my dad it, admired him and, and, and loved him his entire life. He used to call him, that's my, my brother, father. That's my father, brother. Yeah, that's, that's amazing and when I hear about siblings, parents passing. One sibling's like 17. They take care of the 10 year old. You know, yeah. it, it blows me away. It's incredible. Yeah, that's 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 strong. For, I have that with my brother. Yeah, you know, my brother and I, and my sister. We lost two sisters. I lost two sisters since. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, 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 life is so. I, I'm I'm really a believer in living life, and I, uh, this glass will always. I don't care what's in it. It's half full. It's always half full. Yeah, at We're least. here. We're here. Look at you. Look you at know? look at you. You here you are in prison in a maximum security prison for as long as you were. Strapped down, naked, beaten, tortured. And now look look at you for the yeah. last what, three years, four years? Four years here, and then I developed the program when I got out. I got a best selling yeah. book and all this crazy stuff. You're right. I think listen, that's what I tell young people. If I can do it from the streets, from the you know, Bronx and Brooklyn, New York, you can do it. I don't want to hear it, you can't. You know, and your story is the same thing. So you're in the insurance business. Let's get, I'm getting back. You're in the insurance business, Brad, right? I went, I went down to, I was living in Orlando from when I was in, uh, uh, when I was going to my 11th grade year, my parents moved to Orlando. Okay, so you, you finished high school in Orlando. Finished high school in Orlando. Um, so, yeah. I, got, I got drafted by the, uh, the Chicago White Sox. Real, as a pitcher? Yeah. No, or, no. I was, I was a shortstop, and they wanted me at second base. Wow, good for you. Got drafted. Yeah, my 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 dad was a. But great. I, I wanted everything right now, and because I left in my eleventh grade year, all those kids that I grew up with, they were gone, and now we were going to go to college, and they were all going to be there, all my old friends. So I was like, I'm not going to play pro baseball. I'm going to college. And uh, that lasted for a semester. Did you love baseball? No. Yeah, you did it because everybody in the day you got into little league. You were good. You, I, you're an athlete. I was, I was great, and and I say that because my dad would say to me, "Because you, you're only as good as the people you're playing with," and he meant that as a knock because growing up in North Miami Beach. It's all a bunch of Jewish boys. And, yeah. and, and know, none of them could play baseball. You didn't expect, you didn't expect much. From, you know, you didn't expect much. My dad You couldn't thought, win the debate club, but yeah. you, could, you could win the baseball. Yeah. So when I moved to Orlando, I all of a sudden, the, one of the top teams in the, in the country, I'm the shortstop. And so now I'm looking at my dad to be like, what do you mean I'm only as good as the people I play with? I'm, I'm playing on the best team in the country right now. And it, it didn't matter. 
You, it, you it, say that it, in it a funny matter. way, and that's so true because I tell people a lot of times, you know, I've been in a lot of fights and, and altercations in my life, been shot and stabbed twice, and and I tell, you know, people, I, I was a good fighter. I mean, I fought in a ring. I used to spar with a cruiserweight champ. I did a lot of stuff. And, you know, I got my ass kicked, and people, people said, oh, I never lost a fight. I said, you never fought the right guy. No. Period. <laughs> I don't give yeah. a fuck of it, Joe. Mike Tyson, if somebody's going to kick your fucking ass. I, I, I witnessed it. I witnessed crazy shit. And, uh, and as tough as you think you are, you're going to run into someone who's not. And like wow. you just said, you haven't just ran into the players that are better than you. You were in it, and your dad was trying to tell you, keep going, see how far. And then you become the Mike, if you can, obviously. Then it's about checking egos. But man, I learned that quick, you know, fighting a lot. And unless you get your ass kicked by a guy that's smaller than you, who's quicker than you, whatever it is. It will humble you fast. Really quick, you know, in a fight game. I don't take anybody uh, for granted. And when I fight, it's dangerous. And that's why I don't try it because I my, I have a switch that's very bad. Huh. And it's snap switch, you know. And I, I don't, I don't want to do things that I know I can and capable and did. And it's not nice. So I, I've learned as an older guy now. Sure. I, and plus, I, you think I'm fighting at 27? I'm hitting him with a bat. You know, I ain't hitting no fucking kid. <laughs> yeah, they're wind. You know what I'm saying with yeah, all that. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. So you're a baseball player in Orlando. You go to college. You're in the, you're in a college. What, what school did you go to? I went to USF. Okay, you know, Central Florida. Sure, I know. And you did actually got a good baseball program. Yeah, I wouldn't have known. You didn't even play on it? I didn't play. You didn't try play. out? No, I wasn't there for that. I was there to party. I yep. was there to get my two years that I lost with all my friends. I was there to get it all. And back. what did you study? With, uh, some garbage. I I, I, didn't I mean, a we, history degree, some bullshit, I was, right? Uh, <laughs> political science, something like that. Okay, something, it didn't matter. Something ridiculous. Something okay. that was. A waste How long of time. did you last in it? Um, I got an AA. Oh, you got two years. So you lasted two years. Yeah, I got an AA. But uh, that came after my first run in the insurance business because I, when I went to college, I only lasted a semester. And then I moved down to Miami to go to the insurance Oh, that's what business. I meant. So you get in there, you're in there a, a semester, and you it's say, semester. Oh, forget I'm, this, I'm going back to I'm, South Florida. I'm done. They, they, the place I was living told us uh, that we weren't welcome back. Um, we, 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 ran, we ran, we were hellraisers there. And uh, I just... Didn't like school. I liked a more structured life and going to school on your own at 18 is not structured. You think of military? Never. Never thought of the military. Well, um, most people, like well, we did because of that. You know, yeah. we had nowhere else to go. Even school was not a I, big option. I, I, wanted, I wanted to succeed. I wanted to, to somehow I had this, this driving force to. Yeah, to but succeed at what? Did you have well, a vet avenue yet? You just want to be successful, but... No, the insurance business. When oh, I you wanted in, to be in the insurance business? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I got into the insurance business. I mean, who 19, did you see in the insurance business that, like, like, my, like I was a mobster, so, I mean, I want, I, I saw the mobsters. Uh, my, my brother, my cousin, um, my uncle, and my dad. Were They're all, all in the insurance business and all doing very well. All, all, we were all doing very well. They were all doing very well. Very well. Right. They own their own, like they were... Agencies. Agencies, and agencies. Yeah, So yeah. you get contracts with different companies. Right, right. I and get, uh, yeah. you can write insurance for them. Right, exactly. I, I mean, I know a little bit about it. So yeah. now you, you go back at 19 or so. 19, I, got, I moved in with my brother. In, in South Florida in again. In Aventura. And uh, I learned how to sell insurance, kind of like an animal, rather than uh, 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 the regular way. I, I What we did, Larry, was... We sold premium instead of insurance, meaning we found out how much money we could get, and then we'd put the product to match up to the amount of money that we could get. Out of the person. Right. Now, when you say get out of it, do you mean a monthly payment? No, I'm talking annual payments. Oh, so you figure out, I could afford 200 a month, that's 2400 a year, I know I could take that out of them. Is that how it worked? Basically, basically, you're, you, there were so many games that were played you know in the house to figure out what's in the checking account and, and there's a lot of older people that you walk in and their kitchen table is just full of mail and full of uh uh private papers and and and, and you can literally see what's and you can on. literally just see you know this lady's got this he's got two investment accounts with she yeah. and leaving you know okay so the trick was to what they 
what we got in trouble for, um, they were, there's a term called sliding in an insurance business. Well, let's get to, let's, sure. let's not, let, okay. uh, you're jumping ahead of where you're. All right. So you're in the, now, you're I'm, 19, 20. 19, I learned a business. That how you, you start working for somebody? Your my brother? brother. I okay. worked for my brother. Now, he had his own agency? Yeah. Is he a lot, he's only three years older than you, right? Three and a half years, yeah. So he's already at 25. He's at his own little office. He goes in every day? Everything. Yeah, he had it all. 25? He, uh, yeah, I would yeah. say 25. And then 24. you walk in, you know, he says, come on, you'll work for me. I'll teach you the business. Right. And now, do you go in as a salesman? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Does he oh, give yeah. you tips on selling? I mean, well, I went out like for probably two months. I went out with him to, to when he went to work. I went out and I was just you. You shadowed him. I shadowed him. I shadowed my cousin. Um, and you're learning again. You're a smart young guy, so you're learning how they approach it, and you're going to catch your own vibe. Yes, okay. absolutely. Because it's sales, obviously, it's, right? And I always I always think of people like you know who Grant Cardone is. There's a lot of guys online, you know, that, you know, I call them self made gurus. They think they're gurus and they're really stealing people's money, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so common, you know, and yeah. you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. uh, and I and I watch a lot of the things that, to, in the background because, listen, I'm a street guy. The first thing is, all right, where's the scam? I mean, that's just the way I am, you know, that's street guys. I don't look for the, I don't look for the good stuff. I look for the bad stuff. And if I can't find it, that's good. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So you're 20 now. You start getting into that. You become better and better at sales. Or? I, I became better and better. First couple of weeks I went out, I didn't make anything. And then all of a sudden you sold your first one and it just, it's just sort of rolled from there. Now you're and legit. You're totally legit this com time. Completely legitimate. I'm licensed. I'm able to sell. Did you have to get a series seven and all that? Um, no, I think the, the only license I had was a health life and variable annuities. So health and life insurance. Yeah, you're not selling stocks. That's no, serious no, 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 no. But a lot of insurance people get that. They do. And yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. just because it's, I did a few insurance people. So now here you are, you, uh, you're an insurance guy. What was the scam you were arrested for? Okay. I'm going to do it because I want to let people know, and then we're going to go back how you got into that scam. Okay. We, um, when I was 23... Excuse me. Going back to when I was 19, I got in trouble. I had my own agency after I left my brother. I had my I, my dad got me my own agency. All legit so all far. The, Not, all, nothing for... All legit. 100% okay. legit. And I started sell, started selling insurance and learning how to run the office and, and da -de -de -da, all those things. Um, and then I came up with this, this idea to make... Because what we used to do in order to get our clients was we would set up with a, a lead service company who would send out questionnaires to to certain people to all all people? I mean, the, the list companies are amazing. You can get a list of a, a CEO, of, of, anything of you everything want. Everything is almost down to exactly who you're looking for. Oh, absolutely! You know, yeah, a single yeah. single head of household, female makes between sixty and eighty grand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we didn't even care about that because these are, these people are all retired, so we, we, right, didn't, okay. we didn't we didn't care about that. Um, so. I lost my license when I was 22. You, why did you lose your because license? Because I was more, I, I was, I stole money from a lady. I stole $22,000 from a lady. Okay, how did you steal that? Cause just just because what we had set up with the companies that we, we were doing business with, because my father and uncle had done business with these companies for years. So what we were able to do was open a business checking account and any of the checks that were written out of the companies we worked for, we were able to deposit into our checking account. And in the business checking account? In the business sure. checking account and send the insurance company minus our commission. Instead of it getting sent to them right. and you getting a commission, you're getting, you're sending them there. Right. right. Yeah. Right. right. Um, so I, I stole, I picked up $22,000 is, is what they say the dollar amount was. I don't really know. But now, when you say, say it wasn't a one-time thing, it was like over like. No, I, I, I went to the same lady like three times and picked up this money because I was more interested. The insurance business didn't kind of light my fire. I was a kind of a, you know, I, I was a bad kid. I, I, I didn't care about taking shortcuts. So I had an opportunity to 
actually sell drugs while I was down in Miami. Wait, wait, you are all over the place. So I, we're going to slow okay. you down. You're 22 now. Now 22. So before I'm, this is so you're working with your brother. No, I was working on my own. Oh, you mean time. within two years you oh, had yeah. your own place? Within six months I had my own place. So you're 20 years old, 21, you get your own place? Yes. Who comes into a 20-year-old, 21-year-old? Well, we didn't go, people didn't come into us. We went to them. We traveled the state. You know, we'd leave on Monday morning, and we didn't come back till Wednesday night or Thursday. Now, you so, opened this place, right? With legit money or there's really there's really no upfront money that, that yeah just to rent the place and a name and all that corporate that, and all that bull crap that, that's it Other and now you're that. selling because you have your the reason you were able you had good reputation with your dad and your family and everybody in your name as with, insurance company with the company yeah, yeah so yeah. they oh wow there's another one let's get him on board he's making us money absolutely you do this now you know you're in there a year and a half I was too young I I, I wanted to play. So you yeah. wanted a party? I wanted a party. I was too young. I Were you wanted, into drugs and I everything? Wanted, I, no. No, all, all I smoked was marijuana. I didn't do cocaine. You didn't do coke no, or no, no. Did psychedelics and all that kind Never of stuff? Never have. Okay. Never have. So you, you do that, what you said, you, but you sell drugs, you said. Yeah. How it ended up working out was while I was down in South Florida, I- uh, Statutes way up. I had a, yeah, I, I had a, a broker, a stockbroker, who worked for a Morgan Stanley. So you know, there's there's hundred guys up there. Totally. And uh, they were in need of cocaine. You know, they they to keep them up, to keep them doing what they were doing. And I had a just through basketball, through athletics, I met. You know, you play at city parks, and who do you meet there? Sure. You know. So I met somebody who I was able to get what I wanted to get for a certain price. And I would go into uh, Morgan Stanley and a couple law firms and a couple of used car dealerships. Sure. Guys who make money are not bitching about an eight no. ball being $190. And, and it was all an eight ball. There was nothing. Yeah. I never sold anything less than an eight ball. So I, when I ended up. Um, why I stole the money, I have no idea. No, you you make, was, are you making money doing selling drugs? A lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Okay. I was going through probably half a key a week. Wow, that's a half a key. That's a pound. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot in eight balls yeah. or ounces even. You know, you, that's, that's a lot. You got, you know, pound of 16 ounces, so you're talking ounces. You're talking, wow. Yeah, 1.1 pounds. I know. So, I know. Yeah, <laughs> believe yeah. me, I know the weights of all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was great. Um and it was easy. It was safe. It was kind of safe. You know, I'm walking into, you know, dressed nicely and walking in. To yeah, a nice it's a office. law firm yeah. or this or yeah. a stockbroker firm. That's yeah. that's very normal. Back, let me tell you, back in the 80s, too, uh, my partner in, in the mob, you probably read and heard some stories. He was in drugs. I was a robber and a strong arm. He, he used to sell, love to sell to Wall Street. Mm -hmm. The prices would double, double. And they want so much because they got un. un Tap money to take care of clients. These stock people, literally. And back then, it was you got to take care of your. Clients. It's they'd even ask you, "I want this or cash or a trip." I mean, literally, that's how it was. Really, a big game like that with all mm -hmm. the market. So you end up finding the market. Now you're in Miami, though. I'm in Miami, um, and once the once they caught me. For, for the insurance, for stealing the money from the lady, which was a really stupid thing. Well, hold on, you, you, you passed that. So now you're, you're doing drugs. I'm, I'm selling, drugs selling drugs while I'm in the insurance business. Right. Now you decide to steal this money. I, Did you have a spending issue? No. Did, why would you steal 22 when you're making money? Like you got an, money? Like an idiot because I could. Okay. That was really it. Just stupidity, being young. You, you were pushed and, and you figured out a way and you said, this is cool. I want to figure it out. That's it. That was how it was. So now you, you steal 22000 How do you get caught stealing 22000 well, from her? like a, a brilliant guy that I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we sold this, I sold this lady a policy for like $7,500. The company didn't put it through, so they sent her a refund. I took the lady with the refund check to her bank to cash the check. And like an idiot, I'm standing there at the teller's saying that, uh, yeah, it's my grandma. We're going Christmas shopping. She needs to cash. She's check. hearing this. Well, the lady didn't. She did whatever we asked. I mean, I, I, to be quite honest, I mean, I don't think the lady was all there. 
Mm. So, ah, taking advantage of the elderly. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah, did yeah, that. They, yeah, so my first two charges for this was was uh, financial exploitation of the of elderly, the elderly yeah. and grand theft. So whenever you're holding money, uh, even if you sold something, if you whenever you're holding money back from somebody, it's grand theft. Especially the amount. It goes one to the amount, yeah. how much, and then it goes again... Is yeah. it by deception or some other way? There's different things in yeah. the law. So you steal. The, how do you get caught? How does she catch or how do you get caught? I get caught. The bank tipped off the police that I was doing something shady with this lady. And then the police got involved. And before I knew Just because it, you went to the bank with yeah, her? Yeah. If you didn't go to the bank, what do you... It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't happen. You probably elderly... Before she passes, something, you know. I got what? myself on camera, and the bank tellers testified of what I said, who she was, and what we were there for. So, I mean, it was this stupid move, Dean 22, and, and here we go. We're in trouble. And um, Now, they, did they come to you? They it, came to me. They, the insurance department investigators came to me, asked me to come into the office, to their office. Well, like I know now, I would have certainly never went into their office. I would have had them come get me, and I would have had a lawyer with me. And but, shut up. But I didn't. Yeah, but I didn't. I thought, oh, I'm smart enough. I'll talk my way out of this, like like every idiot does. And uh, you can't talk your way out. And I remember after about two and a half hours of talking to these people, I left with the biggest migraine headache. <clears throat> I was so friggin' depressed uh, knowing that, this is coming to an end quickly. Wow, your criminal career is off and go in one shot. You, you, was this the first time you did anything like that? First time I ever took money from somebody without giving them a policy. Yeah, this was the first time, and you get caught your first time. First, that's usually very rare. I always tell people that's bullshit. You did it, and you, I, you know. I did it over a course of with her probably about four months. Right, you stole the seven. Well, the seventy-five was the last check. Yeah, and it's funny they wouldn't give me the seventy five hundred. It was Christmas time, so they were like, "We we can give her five thousand, but she's gonna have to come back to get the rest of the money." I was like, "Okay, just deposit in her account. The five thousand will be fine," and we left and we got five thousand dollars in cash. And but she gives she it to you, of gives course. Gives it to me, and I took her home and gave her a kiss on the cheek, and that was the end of it. So the bank calls while you were doing that and says, "Hey, thumbs up with this." Not while. But you know, yeah, afterward, but afterward, yeah. yeah, that's even rare. And they say, "Hey, something's up with this person." Yeah, and he had an older lady in here. They do this. They start their investigation. Mm-hmm. How obviously is is your family? They're all in the insurance business. I mean, this had to be a traumatic event for this uh, family. I was the biggest piece of shit. I was a piece of shit as far did, as my did, my... did they push you out of the business? Like, were you out of the business? Now you have no office. You had to close that office. Everything. I mean, I lost my... I lost you lost my your license, license and stuff license. like that. Yeah, I lost my license for good. I mean, no chance in ever getting it back. And I was okay. a felon at 22. I was a, a They felon. gave... What did they give you? What was the sentence? Five years probation. You get five... And, and repay the fine. $22,000 in, in restitution. So you get this. You get hit with this. Yeah. Your family... Uh, Kind of not disowned you, but they're like, you're the piece of shit in the family. Yeah, Why did you do it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I could hear, I kept hearing from your families. Oh, yeah. It was, it was embarrassing. And it was, it, it, like I said, it humbled me. It took me from, you know, riding high to, I was on the bottom, man. I was so low. I felt like a real piece of shit. What do you do for a living at this point? Um, pizza delivery. Waiting tables. And Are you still living with your brother? No, no, no. I had, I had moved. your own place. Once I no, once I got in trouble at twenty two, I was I headed back to my folks' house in Orlando. Okay, yeah, yeah, they let me come in. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was all all good from there. Um, and just you know, I had to work hey. and yeah, go ahead, no, go ahead. And yeah. and being on probation, a lot of people don't understand being on probation when the when the state feels that you have way more money than than what than what they found um you just can't openly go out and spend all your drug money on anything on anything that uh oh, of course has any, has any meaning or any any value you can't go out and buy a car you can't you're on probation. used to be yeah you're on probation and it was 
you know, I, I learned. Now, is that a, was that a state charge? State charge. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never been charged federally. Everything's been state. Okay. I, well, I know if you if you do did that across state lines, it becomes federal. Yeah, I would. I would imagine. We got mail fraud is mm-hmm. all the thing. No, nah, we we didn't do that. And so and now you here you are you you just doing whatever you can to get to doing whatever I can, and then I I met a guy. Through marijuana, I, I met a, I was playing basketball with a guy, and he said, "Hey, man, I know this guy's got the best weed. So, can you introduce me to him?" So I I, meet, I go into this guy's office, and he's in the auto title loan business. Auto title loans. Auto title loans, and he's a Jewish guy from New York. We ended up getting along. I ended up spending about six months with him. Learning the business. The, oh, so you meet him playing basketball, go to get weed or whatever, I and then and weed. you say to wait a minute, and he ends up hiring you. And no, 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 no. He just allowed me to hang out, and he taught me the business. He was like for free, you know, nothing. I wasn't being paid. I right. wasn't. I was just there on my own time, and I learned the business. Uh, during that time, in the ins- I was still selling insurance. <laughs> For I was selling insurance. For that my, is Orlando. I'm in Orlando. My brother's in Miami. I don't have a license, but my brother has a, a agent that you can write on his name. Meaning gotcha. you can go out as him. So I was going out maybe what, two days a month, and I could make $3,000, $2,500. Just writing stuff. Just, yeah. And it, it allowed me to, to spend all that time at, uh, at, at the at other the place. Ti- at the time now, is, place. Now, are you getting the leads from your brother? Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay, yeah. so but, okay. But I changed that. I revolutionized. I have to say I did. Um, there was a point in time where I, when I was in the insurance business at a young age, I was up with my folks. And uh, my dad said, where, where are you working this week? And I, and I told him I was working in Melbourne. And he said, I got some leads for you for, in Melbourne. Right I'm here, like, yeah. great, that's fantastic. That's right here. But on the back of the lead, he had already called these people and found out what insurance they had, okay? Okay. So now you know that Larry Lawton has ABC insurance. So now when I come knocking the door, hey, Mr. Lawton, I'm from the ABC company. Oh, I'm from like, Progressive or whatever. Yeah. But I'm from your company. Yeah. Because I, I know what you have. I already know what who's which company you have insurance with. So when you ended up walking in, you're coming in as a guy. You already I'm working with already. I'm already paying you. What do you want? Right. And and you're telling me you're gonna make save me money. Right. Sure. It was it it was just easy. It was it was just a lot easier to gain trust because, like I said, you're knocking on the door and you're coming in as the agent for their company. Okay. So knowing their insurance. Nobody asked for a business card. No. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I, and once again, we didn't do a lot of business on the East Coast. Okay. Because of the type of people that end up moving to the East Coast, a little bit smarter, you know, sure. from New Northern York, New Northerners, yeah. right? I wanted the people from Michigan, from Ohio, from yeah. Indiana, Kansas, you know, and you know, the people that worked in the uh, middle fact, America factory yeah. all their lives, the G factory, GM factory, whatever, and. And, and that's who you're you're looking for. Uh, you're not looking for the the brightest and and best, uh, t- uh, smartest people in the world. Uh, gotcha. That's not what so you have your for. target. So you have your target. And so I told my brother instead of buying leads, because leads came out expensive to about too, ten bucks a piece. So I mean, when you went out with forty leads at the start of the week, forty leads, you were already four hundred in the hole. Yeah, plus, you plus yeah. you had hotel expenses, gas, oh, expenses, sure. food. You know, oh, you're into you it for a that. couple of grand. Yeah, and um, so I I told my brother I was like, why don't we try to buy, just get the list itself, okay? Which is easy. You can just get the computer printout list instead of leads. Just get a list of women seventy and over head of household that live in these zip codes. So then <laughs> I started calling them because I told my brother how great what my dad did was. So I started calling and, and actually working for my brother doing that. I wasn't selling insurance. I was just getting 30 names a week for him. And he was paying me 400 bucks. So once I learned the title in business and I told my brother how amazing this is, whatever, he decided that he was going to, 
I was going to go down to South Florida and open up a title on business. And, and it had to be on his name because I was a felon already. Sure. I couldn't get the license. So who Now, to get a title loan business, any of the kind of loan, but you have to have some capital behind you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's got it, your brother got it. You, you know. I, I had a lot of capital from, from selling drugs. Right. Uh, we started off, as far as capital, when we opened our store, we started off with $125,000. In the capital, in the, but it, in, that's to give the small loans from title loans. That's to give the small loans. And the greatest thing about the title loan business is that's the only inventory you need is, is, is a check. Yeah. And we, we weren't giving them cash. They could pay in cash, but we gave them a check. And they go to our bank, Bank of America, and go cash the check and without any charge. Yeah, uh, but they have to have a title. Yeah, they got to have a title. They got to own the vehicle. Right. And we, Clear and free, no liens. So all what, yeah. And what I learned was to loan up to 40% of rough wholesale. So, you know, the black book. Right. Well, so, not Kelly Blue Book. Not Kelly. No, no. Those are inflated prices. You okay. go to the black book, which is wholesale. Okay. And you go to the, you know, they have like very good condition. Average. Yeah, everything. So yeah. you go to rough and you say, I'll loan you up to 40% of rough. Gotcha. Okay. So therefore you weren't. Over, over. Yeah, no matter uh, what, you can't lose money. No, 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 right, no. Right, right. No, you can't. And so that was the only only inventory we needed was just money. And I built the business just from what Now I this learned. is in South Florida. This now you're back. South, now I'm South Florida. Where are you? Again, in same Mir area? In Miramar. Oh, Miramar. Right on County, right county Line Road and 441. Yeah. It was the best location uh, and the best advice. Well, I you had Broward gotten. and Dade. Everyone that left, and, and remember where 441 is. I know, I know very well. It's, it's not Biscayne Boulevard. It's it's 441. So it's a different class, totally. different class 100%. of people. So everyone, it's farther out west. Everything leading, everyone going to work out of Dade County had to pass me. And they passed me going home. And mm. the people in Broward that worked in Dade had to pass me. Oh, it's so, a great location. So there wasn't any advertising, like this big advertising thing that you had to do. I didn't have a budget for advertising. We had flyers. had a girl put flyers out. But... When you are located where we were, which was lucky, and the best advice I got from the guy I learned the business from is not to be worried about the rent because you will make the money. So get an office in a good location, something you're going to be really comfortable with. So we got an office that was like 5,000 square feet. Oh my we God. had arcade games in there and basketball shooting games in there. And yeah. Because remember, I'm there by myself all day. and if You're you, just waiting for people to come that, in. That's it. So if you do three, four loans in a day, that's good, depending on how much how much you're putting out. And especially the interest rate was so high. Right. Now, you had a, an attorney look over the paperwork, make sure everything's legal, do all that? No. You yeah, just, well, we had to have a uh, uh, an attorney do the corporate papers and do all that. But no, no. I, and is that, at, at that time, is that business regulated? No, in it? Yeah. no. That's why what you're talking about, we didn't need any of that because the business wasn't regulated. Um, it, was, it was a guy, um, basically a guy who owned a company called Florida Title Loans. He had a congressman in his back pocket, and he got this passed. This bill was passed in the Department of Agriculture. <laughs> on the bottom of a bill. Of course. This is how this came through. Yeah, that, that's kind of normal. I hate yeah, to say it. <laughs> yeah. So who's the scammer, really? Yeah, we no, the government. No, don't even get me on that one. They're but. the biggest. They're, so here you are. You're, you're in the title loan business. Yeah. And things are going very well. We legal. Have, it's a legit business. Everything is legal. Now, you're the legit. office manager because you can't have it because you're a felon. Right. And so you're the office manager, really running the place, doing everything. Do you hire a girl? Do you hire people? When, when, we, when I ended up putting out uh, that money very quickly, which was great, I once again had to go back and start <laughs> selling insurance in order to pay my bills because I couldn't continue to take money out of the company because... It's building. It's, it's building. Yeah. That's your you got no more bill. capital in there. That's that's the thing. Is, is but it's the, on the street. You know what that's street. called? You know, in New York or in the gangster business, yeah. guys like myself, you know, we put you know, put money on the street is loan uh -huh. sharking. Yeah. You know, it's three points. Right. You get it for a point. Or I can get point. it for a point right. and put all the money I want on the street. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. you're going to make, believe, believe it, that 2% is a lot of money because it it's weekly. It is. It's not, it's not, it's not monthly. It's, no. it's weekly without the principal. Right. So it's something like this you're doing. It's what we were doing was legalized loan sharking. I mean, that's 
period. That's right. really what it is. I mean, <coughs> uh, now, did you have a process? I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't do their payments. You got to let you. Yeah, and that's when. And then you take the, the, the their title, and what do you do? Repossess the car. Right. But I wanted to run the business for the long term, and I know that I'm a target sitting there. Basically, target to any anybody. If I if I repossess your car, Larry Lawton's car, and you're still in the mind frame that of you were <laughs> in your old life, you're going to come into my office and tear shit up, possibly or oh, tear me up. Totally, yeah. <laughs> and so I played it off as number one. I I didn't own the business. People in New York did. Yeah, yeah. You're just an office man. I'm just, and I made sure that uh, I made every effort to get a hold of these people. Every effort over and over and over again, calling their mother, calling their father, call whomever I could call. Um, and then when they would come in, I was like, man, I, I, I called you 20 times. I told you I don't have control after a certain period of time. I'm not in control anymore. New York tells me what to do. Right. They tell me to pick the car up. It's picking the car up. Right. And, and you'd give them some number to call that number to get them out. No, they didn't. Was, yeah. they, didn't even, they didn't even ask for that. Right. And... The thing was... You didn't deal with guys like me then, I can tell you. Uh, no, 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 no. We dealt more with people who needed, you know, 500 yeah, bucks. Yeah, you got you. $1,000, okay. if you know. Got you. Um, so uh, the great thing was, is when we repossessed the car, the way the rules were back in that day was the loan was 30 days. You could repossess the car on the 31st day if you wanted. Well... To me, that was... Yeah, like, that's... Uh, come that, on. That's I mean. ridiculous. First, so, you, you ruin your own business. Right. So, then once we repossessed the car, they had a total of 60 days in full. So, now 30 days is over because the loan is... Now, they have 30 days after I re to pay back everything. Repo fees, interest, the whole nine yards. And if they couldn't, then the car became mine. And... You didn't want the car. Well, obviously. a lot of cars I wanted. Oh. I mean, oh, Larry, you know, you know, when they say, you know, when guys say, I caught a lick, I caught a lick, you know, on the street, whatever. So you get these guys that would end up catching a lick. Putting 5000 down on a car. Five, no, they go out and buy a car for 30000 35000 Now they own it. And then, you know, three months later, they don't have any money. And they need it, to re-up. They need to do what they got to do. And now they're coming to me with their title. Hey, I need five grand. On a $25,000 car. Gladly. Sure. Be happy to. Be happy to. And when you repossess the car, you kept everything. Wow. Everything. There was now today you have to give back my, your, the, you have to give back money to the people because you can charge them the interest, you can charge them the repo fee, but you can't keep their car. You can't keep the profit of the car. Right. They've got to get it back. Really? So you can get your fees out of it. But then, if there's six thousand dollars left over, you got to give it back to them. Give them the six grand. Right back in my day, no, that six grand was mine. I didn't have to give anything back, and I ran the business, like I said, for the long term. So I was good with people, very, very good with people. Um, I never charged people. You could charge people to get their stuff back, like their personal property. Oh, just to go in there and get it. Yeah. That's in the car. The repo company could charge that. They, okay, they to come here and get the car, it cost you fifty dollars. No, to come get the car is one hundred and fifty. No, I don't mean the car. What's in the car? Wait, exactly. You so, can say your personal wait, property. It's fifty dollars a bag. They would they would do garbage bags. What happens to the guy's got a medical incident in there or something that he needs? I always made sure they got their property back with no cost. Yeah, just here, go I, get it. I, like I said once again, I'm a, I have to think long term. I'm a sitting duck sitting here. I don't want to piss everybody off. Right? You know? No, no, no. And there could have been any time, no matter, I didn't have cameras in the store. I didn't have anything. It yeah. was just. And you don't me. want them because you're like, you're a criminal. We I don't, don't want. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't need this on camera. No, mm -hmm. nothing, is, nothing is necessary on camera. But uh, when, when, the, when the state regulated the title on business, they gave us uh, like 90 days to call in our loans. So I ended up making deals with people, you know, just. What can you pay? That I wanted to collect as much money back as I could. And give them the car. And, well, no, no, no. I never repossess. I wouldn't rep this is when This is when they regulated the business. So. Oh, okay. Now, you're in this business through the regulation. I, 
I got out before the regulation. They gave me 90 days to call in my loans. Otherwise, I had to convert them over to the new regulations. Oh, and you don't want any of this. No. To... I, 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 you know, now, how long are you doing this? Uh, from 95 to 99. Okay, so for four years, you give a title loans. You're making money. Yeah. You got a lot of money in the street now, probably. Yeah. As we used to say, on the street. Yeah. So yeah. now... They changed the things in 99. They want to change them. And they're giving you guys, all the companies like you, mm-hmm. title 90 days to convert any loan that's outstanding into this new th- new right. stuff. Exactly. You, you Well, you have to do it, but you don't want to do So you're calling these people just to get something. I'm calling them to get as, whatever I can get, as much as I can get. That's really it. It was, it was not something that I was going to be converting. And you said, I'm out of this business. Out. Once they did the loan, that that you said, oh, this is not. No. I, I didn't have enough money to put on the street at 2.5% and make money. Right, true. So, yeah, like, exactly. You know, and you got nobody just unload top pockets just saying, hey, let's. Because, you know, today, a lot of times you're going to get very rich people who just say, well, I got this money. You know, what? I need to make more more than, you know, 5%. Uh-huh. So I'm going to make a 10% with you and say, okay, how much are we going to put on the street? Okay, how much you need? A million? You know, and if you could put it on the street at a million, that's the way to wash money. <laughs> it's the best business in the world to wash money. I mean, I know I, I'm trying to tell people things you don't, you don't do. Yeah. yeah. But obviously that is how you do it. So anyway, so you, yeah. at 99, in 1999, do you get out of the business? With no, no, with no, you're not doing anything illegal in nine, this business? No. 1999, okay. I'm out of the business, and my dad was... Uh, trying to get me to move back to Orlando and he was convincing me that we're going to buy a uh, we're going to buy gold and silver we're going to get into gold and silver business right sure um so that was great you know like I got rid of the business got rid of everything and I was newly married basically and I got married at the end of 98 and uh moved to Orlando and my dad is is was bipolar okay mentally Sure. I mean, oh, they, no, they didn't know a, it back then. Right, in a big way. So after three days of being in Orlando. Uh, you my, moved back into your house? No, no, no. no. You, got, you and your I'm wife got a place. Yeah. You, you place after it. three days of being there, my dad tells me, there's no business for you. I'm not opening shit for you. Why? He brings you Why? up there to open it, and then he comes in out of the he blue. Comes me to go fuck myself. Absolutely. Out of the blue. Had nothing triggered that? The only thing that triggered it was I was when I moved there I was moving there on a Monday and my mom fell and broke her shoulder on a Friday wow my dad was out of town and because I didn't come up that Friday I was coming up Monday <coughs> if you're if you, if I can't trust you to take care of your mother how can I trust you with my money oh my god he didn't want to come off of his trip Oh. So it was put on me. So that was his reason. That what was, was his trip? That, a business he, trip? He was on a business trip, and uh, he was also probably doing things he shouldn't have done uh, against my mother. I'm sure that's really why. Well, why. So, that, that, that you don't know, but it, it, that's between them. You don't even know what they knew. So then two days after that, I get a phone call from him saying, your mother's on her way over to you. Take care of her. He kicked her out. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, he kicked I mean, why didn't he just bring a nurse in for the, for the weekend? I mean, they, I'm sure he could have did that. He could have done a lot of things. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. Right. You know, here I'm calling my mother. Everything good? Yeah. Is the neighbor taking care of you? Yeah. Okay, I'll be there in three days. You know, he could have come home from his trip. Okay, so now, okay, this is now. It's his wife, not my wife. And now this is 2000? This is 2000. So, so, so you get there now, you're out. I'm out. And within 30 days, I'm back in Miami with with my mother in tow. So you take your mother with her, with you and your wife mm-hmm. back to Miami, and that's when all this started, because I didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. I had no idea. And you're a, only 29. Uh, I 27, uh, 29, um, 27, yeah, 29 yeah, no, no, something like, oh, young. Yeah, 20. 29. Okay, so you're 28, 20, whatever. And I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do? And so what's the easiest thing for me to do? Back in the insurance business? Back in the insurance business. With your brother? With my brother. And we, we, uh, 
got together with my cousin. My cousin was very big in the insurance business as well. He was terrific. And we ended up making a business plan, which was totally off the books, that we're going to start running his accounts, my, me and my brother. So now we're going to have all of my brother's accounts and his accounts. You mean your cousin's accounts? My account. cousin's accounts to go what we called loading on people, meaning go and sell them more, more coverage. Upsell them. Up, continue to upsell. Can, and they didn't know they were being upsold. They just thought they were buying what they were buying or renewing what they were renewing. I mean, it was and, all... And it was all not legal? I mean, you didn't really weren't upselling them? You, I, no, no. I, I, did I, you I, give them the product that you sold them? Yes. Okay, absolutely. so... Okay. No, they got it. But the, the once again... If you, what, what they got us on was the fact that we did this to a couple thousand people and it was the same story. What we yeah, were but doing, well, that's just a sales tactic. What we were doing was we were, I agree, but what we were doing is we found out. I didn't that say it's, a, you know, like not yeah, nef- it's nefarious. More, it's morally wrong. I mean, what, what we were doing was completely morally wrong. I was for really illegal because I didn't have a license. So it was totally illegal for me to No, no, I, but, but put that aside. But morally, oh, it was horrible. It, it was, I think, back now. And, and, you know, I saw my mother and I'm thinking now. Oh, we're we're, we're so kid. on her. Like, I she did. can't, you know, we watch everything. Yeah, and I kill somebody. She'll give anything away. There you go. That I mean, if I came in here and told you, you know, hey, that priest needs a a, le- a leg break, and how much, yeah, you know, that that's the people that we were visiting. They, yeah. were all like they didn't that. have guys like me watching. No, if I caught a guy coming here, I would, but I buried that guy. But the crazy thing is, I can't believe how many houses I walked into, and the son was there, and I say I'm the insurance man, and like, okay, mom, take care, I gotta go, and just leave the mother to me. Oh, it's like like giving the lamb up on a on a platter. Because if the guy would have stayed, I would have talked to her for five minutes and be like, okay, have a good day. Goodbye. Right. I wouldn't even have bothered to, to sell. No, you don't want to start that. No. That day you got, oh, yeah, Mm-mm. taking advantage of my mother. So, so, so yeah. now I'm in the insurance business, and we have now, we got uh, two of my brother's friends licensed. We paid for their schooling, paid for their two. To the insurance to, license. To get an insurance license. And my cousin had one guy that he had. And what they call these are straw agents. I'm sure you've heard that term. I heard the term. I'm not really. A straw agent is just um, an agent in name only. Okay. Okay. So we were, so I would walk up to a house as that person, sell the insurance. And then uh, at the end of the week, whatever agent we wrote it on, he'd come in and fill out the paperwork. Because we just have them sign an application. Now the people don't they don't know what's going on. They don't care yeah. who's signing it. They got a piece of paper that says they got this hundred thousand dollar policy. Right. Right. And they're happy. Right. They didn't care. Well, they didn't even know what they were getting. I mean I mean, I've been keeping it hundred percent with you. They didn't know what they were getting. I mean, this is totally uh I mean, I guess the less they it was, they're it was just totally talked into and, and Okay, so I'm getting that. They got, they got, listen, I've seen that happen with yeah. air conditions. I've seen it happen in everything in the world with, with elderly people. Mm-hmm. My mom got hit with a $6,000 air conditioner. That's why I had to come up here. Right. Uh, they won't tell me who. So when you see a guy like me knocking on your door and you're 91, and now I look young to you now, but can you imagine me at yeah. 22, yeah, or 25, yeah, 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 yeah. 26? I'm their grandson, and I used. I was I was different sales than my brother. My brother was in and out of the house, pick up the money, and okay, goodbye. I was the kind of guy that stuck around for the next half hour, yeah, you, talking about you, the family. You cultivated a relationship, absolutely. So and now the next time is upsell so easy. Yes, and the weirdest thing was is is I thought that I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I thought if I give my time. I talked to her and, and trying to that, justify it. That's it. Justify I mean, I, 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 I get it. Like I always say, I, I didn't rob from elderly. Yeah. Didn't even rob the jewelry if they were in the store. But obviously, I'm putting people on the floor, tying people up. I was yeah. a bad guy too. And I tried to justify why well, I didn't hurt them or whatever. But you are. You are mentally hurting you're, them. You're, you're doing so much to people. You're, you're hurting them. I and mean, you're, you're, you're taking money from them. I mean, that's yeah. really where it's at. You're taking money from them. Do okay, it. so now you're, you're doing this. So now we're doing this, and now this is Is it going well? Everything's going really, really well. Making I mean, a lot of money. We're, the, first week I, the first week I went out. Selling. You're a good salesman. 30, 35, we made $35,000 in commission. 
um, first week, I was out two days. 35000 Yeah. Because well, what are you selling to who? Well, that's the funny thing. And that's why I go back to uh, the Department of Insurance, how they've got, to get, they've got to approve these policies to be sold in Florida. So senior life insurance, the com- companies were paying us 100% commission. So that when you see that, uh, let me just give one. Yeah. Come, you know, nine ninety nine. That's all you need. The it's, price nine ninety nine. Yeah, the all, price nine ninety nine. It's garbage. It's garbage. What are you really buying? You, you, you're. What are you buying? Ten thousand dollars worth of life insurance, or five thousand dollars worth of life insurance enough to bury you? That's really where it's at. Because senior life insurance is capped. There's no company that's going to give an eighty five year old lady one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, I'll, I put insurance on everyone I know. Right, right, right. So you're getting. I got, oh, I, I, but the problem is, is, is they spent $4,800 for a $15,000 oh. life insurance policy. Eh. <laughs> okay. That's the premium and the commission's $4,500. It's a hundred percent. So people would put down $4,800 for $1,500. They didn't. I mean, for 15 they, grand. That was right? the thing. They didn't know what I was selling them. They thought that they were buying, renewing their, their home care policy or their nursing home policy. Yeah, those are important, uh, too. And I, and, and, and I know it sounds like I'm rationalizing it, but I never took it away from people. Like in the paper, they said, oh, we took good policies from people. No, I didn't touch their medical insurance. I, I didn't. If they had good medical insurance, yeah. I, who am I to touch it? It's going to come back to me. Oh, I guarantee. Mean, yeah, I don't have the insurance. Right. You know they're going to the hospital soon. Right, right. So if, if let's say, I were to pick up a check for, let's just round it off, $5,000, and I knew that their, their health insurance was coming due in a month, I would send, from my office, I would send a three-month payment in for them. Just so nothing. Just so nothing came to the forefront. They didn't be like, "Wait a second. I, I just, just gave five thousand dollars to this guy." Right. 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 So we would we, we would renew it for him. Right. And, sure. uh, pay and that. They didn't know. Pay that uh, yeah. six hundred dollars, four hundred, whatever it is. Whatever it is, we paid it. Gotcha. Dude. We were making all the business. Right. right. So um, that's how you did it, and and obviously you had lists again. We well, we had lists. My brother, my brother worked off the list. I did the loading. You did where you knew I'm the policy. I'm your guy. Yeah, yeah, I did the loading. Meaning, I no, I went to people that either my cousin or someone that worked for him had written. You know, maybe a year ago, a year ago, two years ago, or they still have insurance, or they they don't have insurance anymore, and you just go back because you can see the history. You know, like I've seen this guy's picked up five checks from this lady. It's obviously it's an easy house. Yeah, like an easy score in a truly route. No, it's no, I, I, I hear you. You know, you're looking and, for the target, right? I'm not, we weren't like we weren't wasting our time on a going, savvy guy that's got a pad out and he knows what he's doing. And when I would call to find out insurance, and they would say, "Oh, I got Blue Cross and Blue Shield from Michigan," I didn't want to see that person. It was company insurance, or it was an agent, whatever. I didn't want to see that person. I believe that if you bought insurance from somebody sitting in your house, and you don't buy Blue Cross of Michigan with an agent in the house, right. if somebody sold you, I can sell you. Gotcha. gotcha. You're not from the lady who calls from Medicaid, says we can get your Part B and this yeah. and all that and everything else. I just believe that if there was an, a private agent that sold you a policy that I certainly could sell you one. As okay, well. so now you're making a lot of money. A lot of you're money. You're doing, and you, now you, things are going good again. And uh, I did not now, know. You're, now you're 30. I'm, I'm 30. Uh, actually, t- 20, 29, 30, and then 31. And uh, I had a child, my daughter, I had her in 2001 in March. And in April, that's when the knock on the door came to one of the other agents that we were using. The the FDLE was there to investigate. To some other guy's house. One of the guys that you used, you put right. him to school. Right. Okay, right. What, what, what did he do wrong? Well, what happened was, I did not know this, but my cousin, before we ever got involved with him, he was already under investigation by the Department of Insurance. They had arrested him several years previous. He, he doesn't tell you this? He doesn't say a friggin' word about it. 
Nothing. And, and so the family never knew he was arrested or under investigation. Our, our part never knew. Meaning my brother and I, we never knew. We didn't know he was under investigation. We, he never said anything. So basically, it would be like, um, you know the FBI is following you, and you're going to say, David, you know, come on, let's go rob this place. I know the FBI is outside, but big deal. Don't worry about that. Right. So he knew that he was being watched. He knew that they were investigating him. They came to him with an offer a couple of years before we got involved, like to pay a million for and, and take and a six-month suspension on his license, and if the problems would be over, but he never did it. So here we came in as, as to this buffet that was sitting in front of us, and we didn't know that we had to pay at the end. So we didn't know that there was the that he was being watched. So what happened is he got a contract with a certain company to write insurance for, small company, and he him and my brother put through like $5 million worth of insurance in the first 30 days. And no insurance? No, there was insurance. But the company was small, and they were like, wait a second, this is a whole lot of risk we're taking on in a month. How did you write $5 million of insurance in one month when you're writing $25,000 benefit or a $10,000 benefit, and it, it, goes, it equals that amount of money? Um, so they knew that there, was, there had to be fraud involved. Yeah, but... Technically, was there fraud, or did you actually go to that many people to ger- generate $5 million? We went to that many people, but the way we sold them was fraudulent. What we were telling them was fraudulent. I got you, but so, you actually could say, no, I went to this person, and I sold them a $25,000 or $100,000 policy. They gave me $20,000. I'm just giving numbers. It doesn't matter. And you did that. Mm-hmm. Yes, you might have said this, that, or not, but you I did ne- it. I never told them they were buying life insurance. I wouldn't say that. I right. would say, oh, we're renewing your this or, or, or this. Or whatever it is. Whatever so now it it's really their word against yours when you're sitting down technically. Technically, but when there's hundreds of people that ha- all have the same story. But it, it, that comes from your brother? I mean, that, your cousin. That, that came from my cousin and my and Was brother. he under investing for the same exact thing? He was, like me, you know, giving fraudulent... Uh, advice maybe you want to call it yeah yeah but he was doing something different he was selling annuities which is which is something i never got involved in because an annuity now you're taking somebody's big portion of their retirement or whatever and you're putting it in locking it up for 10 years yeah 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 yeah. so you know how are you going to do that to an 85 year old lady saying we're going to lock your money up for t-? she's not going to live 10 years yeah you know what happens if her so i never wanted to get involved with that so i guess my morals wouldn't allow me to to do that i didn't want to mess with people's big money you know a couple grand here a couple grand there but never justification, but I got it. I hear you, Brad. So my cousin goes into a house and picks up a check for $250,000. Wait a minute. Made out to his agency. One person gave a check for a quarter million. Right. But this was an annuity. So it wasn't, they weren't buying anything. It's their retirement fund. He's got maybe a million because he come from New York. He's got a great, uh, you know, 401ks, everything else. So he walked out of the house with a $250,000 check and it was made out to his agency. Mm. which it shouldn't have been. It should have been made out to the insurance company. Ah, so it goes to his agency, he deposited it. And Does he do anything with I it? D- I don't know. Oh. We don't, I don't know. Never got deep enough to, but it, it sure did bring on an arrest for him. They so he gets arrested, him, right? Right outside the house. They were waiting. They were there already at the house. So when they sold the policy and they walked out of the house, him and his, his female uh, counterpart both arrested in Brevard County. Brevard, right here, with yeah. a check in hand for 250000 Right here in Brevard? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, and uh, it's a tough county. It's a tough county. Well, I guess it wasn't that tough back then. Cause, I don't uh, mean my, to do a crime, I mean. No, no, I mean the legal system because, uh, you know, they went to jail, bonded out, and because of my, my cousin's father was very wealthy, and uh, he was at the jockey club, lived in the jockey club. Oh, down okay. <laughs> so he knew he knew a retired judge in Broward County who knew the Brevard County judge. And all of a sudden, the case was dismissed. It was it was figured out. It was he had to pay this, late, you know, whatever. It was just give the check back, and that was the end of it. I mean, really, wow. that was the end of it. So the Department of Insurance was not happy at all that they put all this time into this and whatever. And here he gets out with nothing. Not even, a, yeah. Not even a slap on the wrist. So now, now, do you know it now? Now you know it. No, I didn't know it then. 
That's what he did. That's what he did. But now he, he, the FBI is back again. Or not the, the FDLE. FDLE is back again. Back again because they put all, all of this. When I told you the small company, when they put that big amount of insurance through there, the company itself sent out an investigator. Their own company sent out an investigator to speak to some people to find out that if they knew what they were buying. Well, this investigator went to 80-some people, and they all had the same story. I didn't know I was buying life insurance. I didn't know I was buying life insurance. So when 80 people say the same thing, so then, so then by law, the investigation that the insurance company did, they have to turn that over to the state of Florida. Right, to see if they're going to prosecute. Right. So the state of Florida picked it up, the FDLE, the attorney general's office, and that's when we got into, uh, into trouble. We got in a lot of trouble. Um, so now they send out the 80 investigators, correct? They send out the investigators. Now, is there a, is there a raid on all these at one yeah. time? Uh, yeah. When yeah. does that happen? Um, in 2001, they raided my office and my cousin's office. And they went to his home. Because they, what they did first was they did a civil seizure. Which is yeah, I, can, I know be, can be done right away, and they I can mean, freeze your banks. You and they it. did; they froze. I mean, I remember getting checks back, the checks that I wrote for bills, and I'm getting them back as as, as Un, unpaid. Un, and you and, know, wait a minute, I got a half a million in there, right? And yeah, I went to the bank, and oh, they froze your account. I never knew it. I Who froze it? Uh, the the, the attorney general. And yeah. you go, uh oh, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. that's the first sign you no, knew the, something was serious, or uh, yes, I knew something was serious, but then when when they went to that one agent that worked for us, he came to us right away and said, oh, the investigators were knocking at my door. And da, 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 da. he didn't answer. He did. No, he oh, did. Okay. He did. And, and uh, as it turned out, the agents that, that we had working, they just lost their licenses. They didn't get into any uh, criminal trouble. trouble. So, okay, they come to him. They ask him what he did. He says what he did. He and- tells on us. He tells us, but again, all I'm reading here is it's just about the sales tactic. Exactly. That's it, all it is. It is. Right? It is. Okay. No money is being stolen from somebody without them getting a policy. They right. Well, that's the only reason I asked sold. your first one was that. My first one. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. I remembered. I got a, I got a good memory. Good memory. Right. Yeah, I kind of learned a little bit. Yeah. Right? But it was like. Back then, with that poli- whatever policy I was able to sell was like a 60% commission. And with life insurance, now it was 100%. So it made no sense to steal the money. Yeah, you're you just getting a holding anyway. You getting- That's really being greedy. Right. I mean... You're you know, giving them what they want. You're just selling it in a different way. I'm selling it a different way. Okay. Yeah. So now 80, 80 people that talk to, what's their next plan? The government. They just gave, lost these guys' licenses. Are they even looking at you? I mean, they oh, got to yeah. be. I mean, you don't have a license. This oh. dude told on you. He goes, hey, listen, I know Brad has no license. He's running the office. His brother is yeah. the one, or his cousin is the one. We, we did our stuff under their license. And the other brother is the money guy in the behind it, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So they tell everything. So now are you being watched, investigated? Do you know it? Well, once they did our, when they went into our office, so I now when they, they raided, went into, when they raided the office, they but they went, raided him first, right? They went at the same time. They went to my cousin. They came to us. At the same oh, it's time. all simultaneous. Simultaneously, yeah. and then, uh, he was at his office when they came in. I was not at my office when they came in. So they. So you got a girl who's in the office. Saying, no, hey. had nobody in the office. They uh, got. Uh, we were we were had it out of an apartment, mm. and they got the I guess the land, the landlord or whatever to open it to open up. And they went through our files. They took everything. They had a warrant for that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they took everything, and I already knew that they were coming for that they were coming to our office. So we had already cleaned up our files. I was just going to say. I mean, if you we, know, you you're talking about let's say filing cabinet this big, you know, this many files. When they came, it was like yeah, turn that, turn totally, totally. It, it was like this. Because, right. we, we, you know, we used to write stuff on the outside of the file, you know, when the last time we sold them was and, and how good, you know, if they're easy, good if they're client, not. Right. 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 So what they got was what we wanted them to see. That was really it. But 
it was over with already. They had us. I mean, they, they had us because they already had. Uh, but all they got you for is selling stuff without a license, really, and maybe right. sales tactics. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so did they arrest you? Uh, they didn't arrest me until 2004. So now this happens in 2001? It started the investigation in 2001. And now you're doing this stuff. Are you still doing it? Once they came. To your office. I was done. Is your brother done? Is your no, cousin done? No, my cousin was done because he, he didn't need to go out, meaning he never went out. He just. We used his license. We, we, right. We used his people and he was getting paid. And he also had his own agent that he was putting insurance on. He had his own. We had two. He had one. So this. So when the money would change hands, let's say, because we're all in business together and we all need to split the commissions. So if I wrote, let's say I wrote a thousand dollars commission on my guy. So what we would do is we would do the next person. We'd write it on his guy. So therefore, the paperwork was completely separate. There was no cash that had to be changed hands. Like you owe me a thousand for the person you sold. No, I'm giving you a thousand from a, this guy. From this guy. From you. okay. Right. So you just, and that's actually small because now you're spreading it to different agencies. Yeah. It's not like one agent get all these. Ones. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And so now uh, you have whatever five agents, whatever how many you're all selling, and you are you keep doing that, or how are you making money? Once it came, I. Once they came to the office, I knew things were over with, and I got depressed because I knew I had just brand new daughter. It's coming. And You're I a knew, felon already. Yeah, I'm a felon already, and and I didn't realize until later on they had me on tape in the house. In they, your house? No, in in the lady's house. Oh, in. they they had it. Uh, oh, they up. had rigged up a a, a sting in some way. They had it on audio, and then they had it on video. Me, they had me on video. In Miramar, jumping on I seventy five, going over the to the you know allig alligator alley. Sure, I know. And well, then, and then, so then they used to do me. that all the time for my robbery. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I read. Um, so <laughs> they they pick, they radioed ahead, saying, "Okay, he's on seventy five. We already know where he's going because he because I broke the cardinal rule. I made an appointment with a lady to go see her." And you say, Alley, where? Naples? And this was in Naples. Yeah. It actually was Naples. Because uh, we worked the whole West Wealthy Coast. area. Very. But we worked the whole West Coast. I right. mean, sure. Every, every little city, sure. all the way down to Venice and Sarasota and all the way up. I mean, we West Coast has got a lot of money. Yeah. In, in, uh, Especially yes. Sarasota, Naples. The, Naples those. got a lot. I know. I robbed the jewelry <laughs> store there. <laughs> That Fifth Avenue. Yeah. What is it? You know yeah what right the main about? street with the yeah. pier at the end. Yeah. 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 Do I know? That's where I robbed the jewelry store. So you can imagine walking into someone who lives in that area and they don't know anything about anything. And they get and such, they, they they're lot, worried about And they're just willing to write a check out for five grand. They, they almost grand. want to write a check to talk to somebody. That's why I stayed the extra half hour. It's because I knew they wanted to talk to somebody. And I felt like, well. Well, I'm just, stealing from them. Let me at least talk, talk to them. Absolutely, right. Okay, right. so now, yeah. here it is. Your, your cousin's, not his guy's busted. You all know it. They went to your office. Yeah. What are you doing? Freaking out, actually. But uh, I mean, you got to make money. I had plenty of money. Okay, you were stashing it. I had. I was a saver. I, I I wasn't a big spender. When I was a young kid, I was a big spender. But when I now you had a wife and a kid. No, I, I saved everything. I saved everything. Um, so I basically didn't work for the next three years. During the but you had enough, were you back to drug had, dealing and anything? No, no, I had plenty. Wow, then you guys really killed it. <laughs> we we killed it. I had plenty. And um, I just stopped doing what I was doing. And that and then I became a drug addict because of the stress and strain. Time, stress, no doing All that time, those three years, and, and back in Miami, and that day, the pill mills were just oh, everywhere. Yeah. Did you get hooked on oxys? Yeah. 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 I used to take 180 milligrams a day. Never was addicted. No, I did it for ten years, and you just stopped. And you I stopped my own way. I mean, my buddies, all doctors here, uh, would tell you they, uh, he can never. Not they never saw me high on him because I have, you know, ten vertebrae crushed. I mean, I have so much inflammation and oh, stuff. That sucks. Yeah, but I went to a pain clinic in Jackson Memorial Hospital, and they said you can't get high. I mean, what are you talking about? And they go, 
you have so much inflammation throughout your body. How opioids work is they get in your system and they go to your system searching for inflame, uh, uh, infl inflammation. Mm -hmm. It attaches to inflammation. And it dulls it or whatever because you can, then you can function, so to speak. Right. If you don't have pain and why athletes get addicted is uh, an athlete will break his arm. He, they give him that and they tell him, take it till it's over. Now he has no more pain, nothing. It's done. It's repaired. And he's still taking it. Then it looks for inflammation. It goes to the endorphins in your brain. And then you're, then you're once you're getting the endorphins in the brain, yeah. obviously, you know, then it gets become addiction, actual addiction. My buddies told me, the doctors who deal with this is, they know me. I mean, they know I needed it. I was all legit and all that. And they says, uh, you, you know, you get, you just won't be able to get off it. I mean, you'll need help. And I said, no way. And I didn't. They, uh, to this day, it's been over two years since I did any drug. Uh, and, you know, like opioid. That's hard. Uh, I, I, listen, I'm a, I like acid. I like my stuff. Whatever it is. I'm 62. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you shouldn't. And exactly. But what happens is uh, I, I, I wean myself. I was taking 180 milligrams. Then for a whole month, I only took 100 and, uh, you know, half it. Then after that, I half, I got down to, I was taking 10 milligrams a day. Then I went to five milligrams one day. And then I cut it just to do something. I think it was more mental. Cut the pill with pill to two and a half a day. And then I said, what am I doing? Totally did it. Not even a, a shake, not a thing. I smoke pot too. I like pot. Yeah, but it does. Pot, pot doesn't have withdrawals at all. It did me. No, yeah, me. It, it did. Yeah. It, 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 ha it, it did something with my brain where I didn't have that. And, and no shakes, no nothing. I go, wow. And my buddies couldn't believe it. They go, you are the strongest motherfucker inside that I know. They'll tell you that. You are. And it's just that brain of mine that says, I'm not going to quit. I added it up in those three years. I spent $110,000 on, on pain pills. Going to pain doctors and getting pain pills in those three years. Yeah, people that happens to them a lot, you know. Yeah, I was hooked. I was completely. Hooked. Okay, now you now you're hooked. Yeah. You do you get arrested before you clean yourself up, or do you? What happens? How do you go to now? How do okay. you get arrested four years later? Now you're not doing it. No. You're doing nothing. 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 You've been legit now. I mean, with no crime at all for three straight years. Yes. Right? Your yep. wife, all right? I mean, she's mm -hmm. stressed out. And the kid, everybody's all right? Everyone's good. Everybody's good. You're living down in Miami still? Living in Miramar. Miramar. Okay. Yeah. And now you you come home, you get arrested. Do you know how? what happens then? I, it had to be a shock after I, three years. I ended up I ended up moving with my wife up to Ocala, where I currently am. Right. Okay. okay. And uh, Try to get away? or No. No, my parents lived here. I no, no, I meant in Miami. You just said, I just wanted to get out of the rat race because I, I was hooked on these drugs and okay. I wanted off. You okay. know, I wanted off. You're smart enough to see that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. And, and I... Because I, uh, I'm a believer in control, not, not abstinence. No, no, no. Meaning, whatever you do That's in life. That's the problem. People, most people can't control themselves. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer, like I tell people. I couldn't control you, myself. Right, you control it, don't let it control you. Yeah. That's my saying. Yeah, oh, it got me. It got me 100%. You recognize it. That's a big plus. So I moved to Ocala, and probably about four or five months into being in Ocala, they they knocked on the door of the police for the uh, for the arrest. Now you ha now do you have any idea? This is three years later. Mm -hmm. are, are you being investigated? Are you being talked I, to? Oh, oh, I already have a lawyer. My lawyers. No, I, I know that, but are you being still like? Are they calling your lawyers saying we need if we want them to come in? We want anything for for three years. My lawyer was in contact with them, and of course, you know, we all had it set up that we would turn ourselves in when it was time. <laughs> right. So but you're not expected to get arrested. Right. And here they knock on my door. No, they don't give a shit what you. The they don't give a shit what you set up. No. Everybody should know that. So I was I was off drugs by that time. I had you know taken the suboxone or whatever and helped me get whatever out. it took. You got it all because and uh, they made the arrest. Went to Marion County Jail for a couple of days and of course they, of course they arrest you on a on a Friday you know so they can't bond you out till Monday. But yeah, they they held. Uh, the bond, I, I don't know. It was a hundred and fifty thousand dollar bond. I mean, whatever. We bonded out. My wife was arrested too because oh yeah yeah. My wife was in the insurance business too. She was licensed and all that. Oh, you had that. It was a family it business. It was a family affair. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so you guys have the lawyer. You think okay, you both get arrested. What happens to the baby? 
Uh, they were very kind. Um, Usually they are. Yeah. Usually they're they, not going to mess with a kid. They let my, my parents come over. to. They waited for my parents to come over to pick my daughter up. Man, how were your parents? Now, they know what's going on? They do. They, they knew. Yeah, exactly. Your dad was insurance, so, so he my, knows my, of the my game. Dad, my dad knew 100% what was going on. And, and that's why he ended up in Ocala, because he didn't want, he like, wanted to get as far away from us as he could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want and to you start. kept following him. <laughs> you got that right. He's my dad. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. I tell people you might not like him, but when shit hits the fan, it's where's your parents? He, they're there. Thank God, my parents were there. Yeah, they were there. Yeah. I need him for support. I didn't need him for money. I need him for support. Of course. And, and, uh, the only people who know you from your kids wiped your ass. They know but, those, but the that, inner inner working. That's what got me into drugs so much, though, because. He, they were living in Miami when this investigation started. And once I told them what was going on, like a month later, my dad calls me and my brother and says, I need you to come over. I want to tell you about our future plans. <laughs> He's like, we're moving. They were supposed to be living in South Florida. And so they moved to Ocala. So for like two years. Now he's retired too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For two years, I'm by myself with my wife becoming the biggest drug addict, you know, in, in the world. Was she doing it? Yeah. All right. So you both have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, both hooked, and uh, so now you get arrested. Get arrested. You guys now you first you get clean. You both get clean. Both get clean. Okay, and then you guys get arrested. Get arrested, and now I see the charges. You know what what they're charging me with. And what they charge you with? Um, violation. No conspiracy to violate the RICO Act. Four counts of public crimes racketeering against the elderly. No, nothing. No, nothing. Nothing, nothing yeah. about okay. the elderly. Uh, and uh, money laundering. And and they get all of you on this. All of us. Your cousin. Cousin. Your brother. Uh, yeah. Some. My cousin got more charges than I got. Your cousin, what about the other two that? Or brother, did they just get no, states they, witnesses? They, they yeah. States witnesses. Yeah. 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 So that, that's what they got. And it was funny because uh, we played softball on Sunday mornings, and during the course of the case. Those three years, uh, we'd, we'd meet often. My cousin, my brother, and I, we would always meet at Joe Robbie Stadium or sure. whatever, you know, right out in the parking Joe lot Robbie during the Stadium. middle of the day. So there's nobody. And he said to me that your guy is wired. They have him wired. Your brother said that. My cousin told okay. us. And uh, so don't say anything around him. So it's funny because we're playing softball. Uh -huh. And it's it's softball's over, and he's like, "Hey man, you want to get high? You know, smoke smoke some pot in my car." And yeah, so he's trying to talk to me. And you know he's wired. And I told him, "That's I was like, the smart." It's nice when you know that. Yes, and I told him, I was like, "Jay, you tell them whatever you did. Just be honest with them. Don't lie, but you can tell them. I understand." I, you know, you, you made $400 a week off this and we were making, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So I, I understand you have a family, you have this. So you just don't lie because he didn't really see anything other than the fact that he was filling out applications. So we were screwed there. But as far as the cash going back and forth, he had no that, idea. anything. He had no idea how that worked. Nothing. And, uh, he, uh, he, he was a piece of garbage. He ended up, <laughs> he, he, yeah. And the other guy was my brother's best friend. And my brother told him, just say what you got to say. And he was wired. No, no, he never wore a wire. But he, it was more or less like we were just trying to get these other people out of the way. You know, just get out of the way and let's get to the nitty gritty. So then we were able to work out. Now, you now when you were arrested, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you're still playing softball with him, doing everything? Well, I'm in Ocala at the time, so uh -oh. I'm not. I'm okay. not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Now, once I, I want to preface this. I was never had anything to do with my cousin, personally or... or, or in business. In, it was all went through my brother to me. Gotcha. My cousin hated me. I hated him. So we didn't... We never talked. I never went to his office to, to do business. Yeah, 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 my, yeah. It went through my brother. Um... So, after we were arrested, um, you know, of course, depression kicked in again, and now I knew that these these huge charges were against me, and and what's going to happen? So the three of us got together and figured out a way to give a proffer. Sure. Each one of us. Yeah. You just tell them what you did. Right. 
and proffer sometimes can connect the dots between you know if you if you do it wrong but, but we did it right and because of some previous stuff we always knew my cousin they were they wanted time out of my cousin they wanted time me well you're also a felon i was also a felon but they wanted time from him but more so they wanted money mm. they wanted the restitution and they came up with a restitution amount of a million five and uh, sixty four thousand dollars for the FDLE's investigation, mm. and we were able to come up with it. We, we we had the money. You had the million five million so, six. Whatever. So I paid my restitution, and that's where I told you earlier that we were arrested by by uh, the FDLE. Uh, yeah, and by the Attorney General's office. Well, the Attorney General was Charlie Chris, and he was running for governor. He needed to get that. That, that headline in the paper sure. that he got his seniors, Florida seniors, back money. Mm. That was what was important to him. And they got it back. So so you, they actually looked through your records or whatever, and the people they think that you got, they, they literally gave them their money back. They gave money back to as many people as they could find. Right. And then the rest of the money went into their victim's crime fund. Yeah. Yeah, that, that means it's in their uh, pockets. It's in their coffers. Yeah. Because one of the insurance companies paid a million dollars back to to people already. They sent them a check in the mail saying, if you cash this check, you can no longer hold us right, liable. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a million dollars went out. So most of these people got refunded twice. Wow. Twice yeah. the amount of money that they were going to get. Yeah. Wow. That, uh, hey, good for them. I good mean, for what, them right. is right. Good for so, them is so right. So now you... What happens to you, and how, how does the case get resolved? The case got resolved by my brother's stupidity. See, I couldn't have told on my brother. I couldn't have, because they offered me no jail time, restitution, and you and your wife are just... Goodbye. goodbye. Just who we want, your cousin. Right. Or brother. And, and, and brother. I couldn't tell on my yeah. brother. And I wasn't about to tell on my cousin either. Yeah. I just... It's not in you. It's, we just got to work it out. Work it out. So, like I said, the money was most important for the state to get back. That was the most important thing. And when you have attorneys, I don't think a lot of people realize, when you have attorneys where you're spending 100, 150 grand on an attorney, it's a lot different than spending 5,000 on an attorney. Uh oh. <laughs> they get things done that you never thought could get you done. You don't know how much money of that is actually going to somebody. All right. The best advice I, I got during that time was. I went to this big Miami attorney, and uh, a Roy Black kind of guy. Yeah, named Norm Moskowitz. Okay, you know, you walk into these offices down on Coral Gables, and you know they got a hundred lawyers working for them. Oh, I know, more. I know a lot of them. Gigantic place, and and uh, he told me because I when I first went to see him, it was twenty thousand dollars right away, just right away. Sure, and. Within the first three months, I was down to like three grand with him. Oh, and, uh, and he tells And you me, don't even realize it's phone call. Every phone call is a hundred dollars, fifteen seconds, fifteen, 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether I, you talk for a minute or fifteen minutes, I it's know. fifteen minutes. I know how it works. Yeah. And uh, so he tells me, he says, because they're prosecuting you in the Lee County area, in Lee County, you should get a Lee County lawyer. Right. Um, people the prosecutors and the judges, they don't need to cooperate with a Miami lawyer. Not at all. They don't need, because they're never going to do business with them again. But a, someone in the county, they got to they gotta have that And that judge wants to be reelected. He don't want to piss a lot of people. There's a whole bunch of reasons why the state right. court or, is the way it is. Yeah. So, um, where were we? So now that you hire an elite county attorney as they well. Hire elite county attorney and with them that probably you still got both of them no not uh, not anymore i went from the, he turned everything over to lee county and was it only a twenty thousand dollar bill with him no no i gave uh hundred and five thousand to lee county guy oh i just said and and but, only twenty thousand to the other guy yeah but okay. he three months yeah i know how it works <laughs> three, three I've, I've got i had one hearing 10 grand yeah yeah when we when we had our bond hearing Ten grand, My, you know, travel days. Uh, it's twenty five hundred yeah. a day. I got without seeing any court and the lawyers are the biggest criminals in the world. 
They can because they're getting you on your worst day. Exactly. Yeah. I told them that they're called sharks because they feed on the prey, that the people are weak and they need that advice. And they catch at the right time. And yeah. I can go on and on. Okay, so now you here you are. You, you got a Lee County. It's a good one up in Lee County, the best, I'm sure. Got the best attorney in Lee County who, who we were referred to by the, our Miami lawyer. And uh, my cousin still had a Miami lawyer. But everything got worked out. They worked, the lawyers worked with each other. And like I said earlier, they knew my cousin was going to get more time than, than I was. And that's because he did it multiple times? or That's because he was, you know, I don't talk to the guy, but he's an asshole. And he, he treated the insurance department like like an asshole. Yeah. You know, he, he thought he was big wig attorney, could say anything he wants and, and that Oh he's an attorney as well? No, no, no. His attorney. Oh, oh yeah. You know, yeah, I can yeah, hire yeah. the biggest guy. Yeah. Da, da, da. He was just an asshole. And you know, they sometimes they got a bigger heart on for an asshole than oh, they do one hundred percent. Anyone else. So uh he ended up getting two and a half years, thirty months. And what did you get? And I got a year. In jail, not prison. Okay, jail. yeah, they, they kept it under a year. And a uh, ten a year, year, yeah, and a ten year suspended sentence. So you were on, on paper for ten years. Yeah, wow, that's tough. Now you didn't have to report or anything. Did oh you? yeah, every I, month I violated my probation three times. Well, that's so easy to do. I mean, obviously, I went back to jail three times. Oh, they, they and they and they put usually violation. It depends if it's a technical violation or if it's a. I did a year the first time for the original deal. And then and I now where did you do it? In Lee County. Lee County, okay. And then I violated um, after like three years of being what out. Did, on what? Uh, got in a fight. And they violated you for that? Yeah. I mean, the fight wasn't your fault. I got a fight in Marion County. I was arrested in Marion County. They dropped the charges. But Lee County was like... Why don't you have an interaction with, with another law enforcement right. agency... So I did uh, 10 months on that one. Are you kidding me? No. It was dropped, so it was really no charge? No charge. I went there with no What was charge. the fight? Just some bullshit bar fight? or It was on basketball court. Uh, and the cops were called. Yeah. And I hit him. I, I guess I, I caught him the right way, and he went unconscious. He hit his head on the ground. And lucky. The you are was lucky. Yeah. I was very lucky. Yeah, very lucky he didn't yeah. die. That's yeah. what people don't understand. When you're an adult, you're 18 or over, you hit somebody, and they hit their head. It happens a lot. Happens more yeah. than people know. Yeah, that's that's a, a homicide or, or manslaughter. It's or manslaughter. Manslaughter. It's not intent. The okay. So now you violate the first time for a fight. What's the second time? DUI. Hmm. Now you're off drugs though. Off drugs. On alcohol. No alcohol. I wasn't drinking. Oh, you were not drinking, and they still got you for DUI. Wasn't drinking. I. He said, I went through the sun pass lane too slowly. This is one of the sun pass lanes where you have to slow down to just one car piece goes through. He said, I went through too slowly. He followed me for the next seven miles and said, I, I veered. Oh, my God. That's then, such BS. Then he tells me, you know, when I get out, I got to do a sobriety test on the turnpike at 930 at night. Cars coming 75, 80 miles an hour. <sighs> Headlights on me. Oh, you didn't pass. Not that I didn't pass. While he was doing it, and uh, you know how they have those DUI experts, you know, the, the, that are out there. So he comes, and he says, hey, look at his eyes. And he does my eyes, and he looks at him, and he goes, I don't know, it's your call. And he's like, I'm going to arrest him. Did you know? I was in uh, Lake County, Lake County. I now. did a great interview with a doctor and a an attorney. Yeah, that doesn't work. That yeah. happens to a lot of people. You don't have to be high or drunk for your eyes to stagnate. Like Matter of fact, exactly. Doctor proved that 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 the, yeah. how they do it is illegal. How they do it will dilate your eye. In fact, it's worse. It will dilate your eye. Nobody can pass that test if they don't want you to. Exactly. Actually, I, I did a, a thing with Osuna, who is the baseball player for the you know Osuna. Yeah. He was with Colorado. Uh -huh. I have a lot of fans. I didn't know I have a lot of baseball fans. Oh, I have okay. players cool. that watch my stuff. Cool. And I went to Colorado. They gave me game balls. I got a hat. They made me an actual hat that they wear in Colorado. The whole world. For three years. Huh? Meaning you've been in doing this three years yeah. and you're getting treatment like that. Oh, my God. They came, awesome. to my, they came to my 10th floor. I was in a security floor at the stadium in Colorado. That's right next. It's, it's right at Coors Field. In other words, you can look into Coors Field from my hotel room. Oh, well, cool. a lot of players stay up there, too. After the 10th floor, it's a secure floor, or ninth floor. 
and I had a room up there, a suite up there, and uh, I so all of a sudden I come back from after the game. That I did not know this. I mean, I go to the game. I'm with my girl and a couple other people, a couple couple. We went to Red Rocks, you know, out in Colorado, and just hanging out and then watching the game. Some people always recognize you doing something. But I go into, you know, we go to a dinner, 11.30, I get in my room, my phone rings. 11.30 at night in Colorado, who's calling my room phone? Sure, no less. Right. I pick it up, they go, Mr. Law, it's the front desk, there's somebody from the Colorado Rockies, they want to give you something. I said, send them out. Okay, they have to bring them up at security. So they both come up to the door, and I don't know what's going on. Who is this? Hey, he goes, I'm the clubhouse uh, manager, and, you know, we, we want to present you with the game ball. We were That's looking cool. for you. We yeah. you have a lot of uh, fans that are the players that like like watch you in the locker room and whatever. And I'm like, well, hold on. And I always carry a book or two or stuff. And I said, let me come down. We went downstairs. I give him a book. He gives me the ball. Blah blah blah. We take pictures. I get all that. That's so cool. And then the next day, you know, thank you. The next day, Mr. Lawton then again, uh, the Colorado Rockies left stuff at your uh, at the desk for you on the way out. They gave me, I'll show you, I got hats, Colorado, and it literally the same hats they give new players. They actually embroider your name in the hat in, in a label, and it's the exact size of you, you know, and I go, wow, I mean, this is really nice. I just bought shit in there from, for so many years, but anyway, I got all, yeah, I got this nice, I'll show you, and uh, it was pretty cool, but the guy tells me one day, he goes, you know, Asuno, who used to play, but now he's Atlanta. He, you know baseball, I'm sure. So he uh, he had a DUI, and can you look at the, the tape? And I looked at this tape, and I got madder and madder. I said, no, man, they're screwing this guy, really screwing this guy. I ended up bringing an attorney and a doctor, and we went over it, and we, we went over it and debunked that whole entire video. And he's fighting with a good lawyer, so I think he yeah. won. And uh, it was pretty cool because, the boy, it opened my eyes on what they can and can't do with those DUIs. And, and I had a prosecutor from Tampa, who j did that exactly all she did for seven years? Just she, I wouldn't have did this. I would. This shouldn't have been brought to in front of the judge. The whole works. Wow. And the doctor said how he debunked the whole test, every test, uh, from a doctor, an ENT surgeon, and how he. There's no way he could. Look at your your back. How are you supposed to do that? Stand <laughs> on one. Stand on one foot. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I always tell people if they're gonna pull you out, just don't. Say no. Say no. Exactly. Because you're going to go anyway. They just want to get you. They want don't more, give them. They want more evidence. That's all they, want, they do. They want it on video. Look. Did at you them. beat that? No. You I, took a plea. I. Knowing you weren't drunk, you weren't drunk. No, I wasn't drunk. But did you have any drinks? No, nothing. Wow, that but pisses I, me off. But I would yeah, piss me off. I will bet. <laughs> and. Uh, um, that was in Lake County. And then, you know, all the fucking bullshit traveling, you know, getting in the fucking paddy van, shackles, going back to Lee County, back to Lake County. I've done that more Lee. than you. Y yes, you have. <laughs> yes, I've been have. on Cod Air 16 yeah, times. I, I go into that one. Yeah, I just hate the hated. It got claustrophobic because of that shit. Yep. I am so claustrophobic, man. That, that People know it now. I never was. Never was either. Really, I'm really bad. I can't even get in an open MRI machine. They got to give me, they got to knock me out with, no, I mean, out, like, put me under. They got something neat now. They got a, a, a chair, an MRI chair, where you're sitting in a chair, and you're just sitting. And then it just, you're not closed up. The whole, they have a huge TV in front of you. I ha I've it's never, really cool. I went to, I cannot, forget the tube. I can't, you know, they have open MRI machine where you lay yeah. down, same thing. No. And, it, and, and you're open. I can't do it. It's your arms. You, you know that. It's something about, I don't know, it. I'm telling you, my you're claustrophobic not in, you're so not in, You're not in control. You know it. I know You're it. not in control like the, right there. It's like those restraint chairs. Or the, yeah. I can't, I've been strapped down, and I've been uh, put in four points. Well, you've been through it, so. And I, and I just have, man, look, I can get nervous doing it. So now you get a, you get a, you take the plea? Um, DUI, did they make it to a reckless or something? Did no, no, they, they kept it as a DUI. Uh, man, I got to fight that. Because... I mean, did you look at the tape? Did you didn't take? You didn't do it. Uh, so I didn't even. I didn't even fight it. You didn't do. You did the sobriety test. Yeah, I did. Yeah, the sobriety you, test. now you know. You, yeah, I did the sobriety test, but I didn't even fight it because I knew I was violated already on my ten years suspended sentence. 
and yeah, but to have a DUI on your record is is pretty bad. It's, it's actually only, it's a it's worse than a third degree felony. People don't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's DUIs are bailed for insurance purposes for. Wreck purposes. I can go on and on oh, at those states. And yeah. now if you get another one, oh my God. Then yeah. they can take blood after the second one they get it. It 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 at the point they're bad, you know, and, and that and I don't like when I hear about all oh, these DUI experts. You know, if they were real and they were legit, that'd be one thing. But they, they, that that's a money grab too. That's a that's a oh look what we're doing, taking driver. Obviously, you know, People are fighting them now a little bit more. And the way cops are looked at now compared to back then, cops are really vilified now. So you go to court, you know how many of that six people, because it's six in Florida, you know how many six of people do not like that cop off the jump? <laughs> Most of them. Right. Most I mean, them. whether they say anything or not, they're saying, yeah, I, I know a cop like that. I had a friend. Because you're telling your story. People are hearing the story. Mm -hmm. And now that happens more than you think. And we need to stop that. We we don't need. You do need to get a guy who's wervin and crazy, and he falls out of his car. He's drunk. He's drunk. I get it. Going a hundred miles an hour, doing stupid or whatever. I get it. Don't get kill somebody. But yeah. come on, guys, man. Guy, like, I'm a guy. I'm two hundred and forty pounds. You give me a beer, and they say, "Oh, he's drunk. He's drunk." He, uh, I can drink five beers in X amount and not be drunk. Literally, mm -hmm. not be drunk. So it's a bunch of garbage. Yeah. So now you buy. Okay. When's the third time? And what did you do? The third time, I another one with no charge. I called in a, a refill on my prescription, saying I was from the doctor's office. I couldn't sleep, and it was for Ambien. Oh, uh, okay. Ambien. Yeah, that's Ambien. that. That's kind of a, a yeah. bad one because that's so, falsifying the prescription. So, that could be that could be a charge. So they they uh, Marion County. Arresting me, and then. But how did they know you did it? Because once I called it in, you're you're on tape at the pharmacy, and this pharmacy. So you had no refill. I had no refill. And you said, "Hey, I'm Doctor Bong's office." I'm or? calling from Doctor Sessions' office. We want a refill for Brad da, 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 on his Ambien. Okay. And then it was it was a trip. This is how fucked up people are. I did that while I was in the doctor's office. Yeah. Oh, in his office. I was sitting in the waiting room when I did that. Why? Did I you think know. he was going to not give you it? I had no idea. I don't know why I did it. I have no clue, but I did it. And then when I got to see the nurse, the nurse told me, what did you do? I just got a call from the pharmacy. Da, 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 da. You better go and apologize. So I went to the pharmacy and I asked for the lady and I said, I just want to apologize. I'm not here to pick up the prescription. I just want to apologize. It was me called. Da, da, da. She's like, well, I still have to turn the tape over to the police. And so I went to my probation officer that same day and told him what happened. And he says, I don't think you did that on purpose, whatever. I'm not going to violate you. And two weeks uh, later. He violated. Um, no, he never violated me. He never. They, they, they charged you. Um, yes, they charged yeah, me. Yeah, once you have a new charge. They charged me with two counts. So they, they came, they pretending to be a doctor and writing a false, false script. script. Yeah. So I took that to a VOP uh, hearing, and I was facing my now my ten years of a suspended sure. sentence. On a Especially third, with new on charge a, on a third violation. Oh, they dropped the charge. Marion County dropped that charge too. But so dropped you had all. no charge. Not no charge, and that what they did say is they said uh, when there was no charges, the my the Lee County prosecutor, the statewide prosecutor, he told my lawyer, he goes, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show those hicks in Ocala how a case is supposed to be run. And I went there He said that to him. He said that to him. And he also said something else stupid. Um, I went to the VOP hearing. They brought my probation officer from Marion County. They made him come. Sure. He was pissed. Because he told the prosecutor what he was going to say already. That Br I have no problem with Brad being on probation. I didn't violate him. He's the best probationer I got. Right. That's exactly what he said on the stand. But, the, but the, the prosecutor wanted to hear one thing from him. Were you present when Brad, when, you, when Brad signed his probation agreement, the rules of probation? Were you present when he signed? Yes. Thank you. That's all they did. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I signed, so I knew I'm getting in trouble. And uh, so they find me guilty on one, and 
the other one wasn't guilty. I wasn't trying to be a doctor. Oh, so, but they got you for, for they, calling and falsehood. They got me, right. So the judge, and now I'm on bond already. I'm, a, I'm not. Oh, another bond on that. Another bond on that. And uh, Are you working at this point or anything? No. Okay. No, I got plenty of money still. Right. Why am I? There you go. Anyways, uh, um, where were we? No, you, so now the probation comes in, they, they violate you. They violate me, and... What does the judge, judge give you? The judge, the judge gives me six months in the county and six months in an in-house rehabilitation afterwards. So I already knew that I wasn't going to be going to an in-house rehabilitation because I, I wasn't a drug addict. Yeah. I couldn't sleep, and I was addicted to Ambien to go to sleep. But I knew. So when I got out, of jail, I went to see my probation officer. He said, you got to go see these people at the, at the drug rehab place. And the guy, I had a conversation with him. He looks at me and goes, I can't give you a bed here. I'm like, okay. He's like, you're not a, you're not, you don't qualify. He goes, you may qualify for outpatient therapy, but not inpatient. And I said, okay, so what do I do now? And he's like, I'll write your probation officer a letter and explain to him that you're not da da d And... That's how we went back to court in front of the judge again and saying he's not eligible to be in an in-house rehab. And the judge just basically said, well, he can go to an outpatient. Whatever they say he's got to do, he's got to do. So that six months inpatient went to 10 classes. Right, right. Once a month, you go to a class or some bullshit. That was it. So now you do that. Now you're off. When do you get off? 2015. So now you're totally off everything. Totally off. What a relief, huh? People don't get that, you know, how much how much pressure can be on you. No matter what you're doing good, I'm doing good, you got to watch it. I never understood until I went to jail how people would, I, I say I never understood until I violated, how people would be willing to take a year in jail and not two years probation or three years probation. They say, I'll do the year because yeah. I'm not going to make it through the three years. Well, listen, especially back even, even though there's a pot or anything stupid like that, you mm-hmm. get dirty urine and... And, and who's not smoking pot today almost? I mean, I don't know many people who don't. The, uh, I mean, I don't anyway when you, when you come back. So, uh, and, I, and I totally understand it. I get it. But I also say, hey, if you're really going to keep on that nose, it's almost like, oh, shit, I know I'm going to screw up. And it's kind of like a reminder, like, okay. I, I shouldn't have screwed up. I mean, that was no, just No, obviously. The a, DUI was BS, total. It, that it was, but... Total, no, that, 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 when they're myself, doing that. I got myself in trouble. I well, mean, you got yourself in trouble with the second one, for sure. Or third one, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, the DUI, again, I, I don't buy that. I don't like when they take stop you for really no reason. And they do that a lot. And they, they come up with, oh, the light was out, it flashed, it, mm-hmm. you know, you did the, and, and it's just a reason to, to harass, I think. Or, I think it is. I think they're look, possibly looking for something. No, they you know? are. And, and I, I just don't, that's where the, Policing has a lot of problems. Policing has problems because they're not doing, they're not protecting and serving. They're, at that point, they're either trying to get some funds for cities because they do make money, or they're just showing authority and they want to like, oh, and, we're running this city. And you know? what sucks on the street is when they get behind you and run your tag, your record comes up. Oh, you have to so, have a mind. You yeah. should see that. So I they, mean, yeah. they already know. Like, oh, look what we got. Your guy on probation. Da, da, oh, that's in, out of his Even time. not. I mean, they know me for when I was on probation. If I, they stopped me, they, they put me in handcuffs. And they can do that. Okay. Because of uh, officer safety because of my violent past. Right. You know, I have a very violent past with organized crime, armed robberies, tying people up, shootings. So it's like, oh, oh we're going to, you know. And they put you in handcuffs. And I'm all right. And I start freaking a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and then, okay, I kind of call somehow, you know. Then once they see, they'll let you out and say, I had to do that. I'm sorry. What? sorry. Stop being a pussy is what I want to tell them, you know what I mean? But uh, it's it's just a way to harass, and it's a way to keep people's their foot on your neck, let them know, you you know. Well, that's what it is. They, can't, they got their foot on your neck. And they let, and, and 100%. And I, they, it can drives flex me nuts. It, they can flex it anytime they want. Absolutely. I mean, I. So you so you end up, now you're doing well. I mean, you're out, you're, you're no more law problems, no anything. Oh, you, do you get along with your brother? No. No. Is it over this incident? Yes. 
Yeah, and, and is there a reason because you did anything? I mean, obviously, yes, okay. yes. The, 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 I love my brother, but when this case came down, when the original when the original case came down, so you can go higher with the chair too if you want. He did not. He, he did not want to make a deal. He wanted to take this to trial. He wanted to take it to trial, and my cousin wanted to take it to trial, and my cousin's a very rich guy. So my brother thought, oh, if I stick with my cousin, that there's going to be plenty of money out there for me later. And so as far as I was concerned, he chose my cousin. He chose money over me. I and mean, obviously, he ends up getting how much time? He only got a year. He got a year. Listen, I can do a year in the bathroom. He's, but he's my a, point is, if you'd only do a year, he yeah. got away really well. Really well. So did your cousin, two yeah. years, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, nothing. That's really nothing. And they made millions out millions. of the deal. Millions. Right. And what they wanted to take that to trial? Oh, yeah. Well, number one, you, you, you know, once again, the lawyers got you, you know, when you're at your worst. The lawyer again. And the lawyer's saying, oh, yeah, we, they, they, the whole idea was this is a financial crime. There's, 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 they're never going to find six people in, in Lee County, Florida that are going to understand the numbers in this particular crime. There's no way they're going to understand it. And You're going to gamble 10 years? Because that's what you get. Yeah. If well, you take that to trial, I'll bet you get people getting a lot more time. Well, you know what those, you know what racketeering carries? Uh, first of all, racketeering carries 20. So, okay. I mean, that's off Jump Street, and yeah. it can go all the way up to life, depending on what the crimes mm -hmm. are within and, racket. And money laundering is a first-degree felony, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could, and yeah, now, you, again, you put in the place for a, a trial, and a, most judges sell you, they, oh, it doesn't matter, that's bullshit, and, you know, the state does. They're going to try, and then you're going to get what they call PSI, you know, yeah. PSI, and PSI is going to come back, and, again, the one guy, uh, your cousin has a criminal history, and that's going to go down to what it is. And then they're going to add up all the money. And mm -hmm. they're going to come up with what they call ghost money or ghost dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, McDonald's. they're going to get, okay, you had 20, you know, they had 500 clients and they got this amount of money. These clients now, they were, you know, $20 million. Just that, you know, they're going to come up with crazy numbers, whether it's good or not. I mean, they're going to do that. I've seen it done a hundred times with drugs and everything else. And it's sad because, uh, that's not playing fair. You're supposed to have, be able to do that, but you can't. No. And you it, it literally, by, by, I tell people, what's your plea? And it depends on who you are and how much you know and how much really you are a criminal. Because then they start digging and digging and digging. And before you know it, taxes and this and the IRS. And yeah, listen, they, they start bringing the, the power of things onto you. You're in trouble. <laughs> people think you, they can win. I don't care what kind when of it says you go. United States of America versus. You, you're in trouble. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I tell people all the time, you'll like this, even with the state of Florida. I tell people, listen, I don't give a shit what you do. This country can do whatever they want. I watch them go to Panama, take the president out, fly in there with jets, take Manuel out of there, he's the president, make him a drug dealer, put him in prison in Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they can't fuck with you. I tell people, you who the fuck you think you are? They will fuck with you. Listen, why can't Panama come here? Or forget it, uh, uh, during the Iran Contra affair, how, why can't the countries that, are, that, that were accused in the Iran Contra affair with Noria, yeah, with uh, Ali know. North and all yeah. that, why can't, let's say, uh, whatever country it is down south, it was Panama too, come here and say Reagan was a drug dealer? Let's get Reagan, put him in jail. Can't do that to the United States. It's just too big. We're the big <laughs> we're, guy. We're the muscle. Yeah, we're That's the, all it is. We're the bullies. That's it. That's all it is. We're the bullies. I mean, why, they have war crimes against these presidents. Whether I don't care who it is, and they don't do shit. They go to Noriega and make him a drug dealer to shut this down. I mean, this is the president of a country. I mean, a legitimate country. Whether you think he's robbing or not, what you could, who's bullshit you know what's going on in another country. But... What a big boy, what a muscle, what a yeah. bully. There's more bullshit that goes on here than to anything. Just like, uh, I love the PGA, I don't know if you golf, uh, uh, if you yeah. ever golf. 
I was very big against the PGA Tour commissioner because he's out there saying, you know, oh, we, we don't want to work with Saudi Arabia because of the Khashoggi. That's what the Live or... Yeah, Live or Golf. I love Live yeah. Golf. Yeah. Who are you to tell Saudi Arabia that they that messed with Khashoggi? You don't think the United States has done that and the CIA has whacked people and did everything else? If you're really that naive to think we're this beautiful, pure, pristine country... And you, you're a little bit lost, you know what I mean? There's so much crap, and just because we're the muscle, money, and and we, and we are, money. we are so corrupt. It's, it's, I see corrupt. some crazy shit. And really next are. door, next door to me is a is a, a guy who lives. I mean, excuse me, who works uh, for the Bureau of Prisons. Oh, he, right next he, to you where you yeah, live. Yeah, he's a big wig with them now. He's you know he started out small. So I asked him a question. Where's he, Coleman? Day. Has to be. No, he does administrative stuff, so he's traveling all the time. He's, he's is, Are you sure he's not? Is, is he a uh, DHO? No, not the Department of Homeland. No, no, no. Uh, DHO is a disciplinary hearing officer. They travel to prison to prison. I, I could be. I don't know. He told me how he started out. You know, he started out as a guard working with inmates and then moved up and moved up and moved up and moved up. And, and, he, and he's, he, well, you don't know what he is, like his title. No, I, I, I don't know. But I asked him about Atlanta. Oh, what did he say? It was yesterday. We were talking on the other side of the fence. Oh, because you, you were coming here? Yeah, and all. yeah, yeah. So I said, what's going on with Atlanta? What is that prison like? And he just didn't have much to say. He said, <laughs> it's just a, the whole system, he said, is fucked up. He knows. Uh, they, if you're in it, you know. When I was in Atlanta, we had a murder a month. That's crazy. Murder. I mean, it was crazy. It was, it was, it was really, really bad. They had a, a warden. I mean, you tell him. Oh, he hears this. The warden's name was Willie Scott. Yeah. He was troubleshooting warden. Troubleshooting mother. Man, that big Willie, big Willie, man, that motherfucker didn't give a shit. That fucker would go in and literally he had what they call power above the region. Mm -hmm. He literally can go into the prisons. He did it. Come in at 2 in the morning and wipe out 100 people. You know, we had 180 people in, in two floors, like a one. I don't know, they'd wipe out 60 people that were on a bus. No property, zero. They'd throw it out. I mean, they didn't give a fuck. Literally, put you on a bus and you're and gone. And you're gone. I mean, that. No quick. one knows where you're going. Nobody. And, man. That's too much power for one guy. <laughs> they, That's sheriffs in county, counties have that. You know, when you think about the county jail. Yeah. I don't know what, who, what, where you're at, guy. Like, in this Brevard County Jail. The sheriff runs the jail. Yeah. That's, that's so wrong. Here's what happens. If the sheriff wants to look good, he says crime is down. Look at my jail. It's empty. He, he just don't arrest. He tells his deputies, don't arrest anybody for minor shit. Don't arrest anybody unless it's a felony or whatever. Now the numbers look great. Jail's working great. Now yeah. budget time. We're overcrowded. Put these fuckers in jail. Now the numbers up are every day. They... They're processing people. They need more people. You know, I can go on and on what they're going to do, you know. And it, and it's crazy because it's that easy, mm -hmm. you know. And, wow, you think to yourself, no, what they should do is counties, like you, you, whatever county you're in, Lee County, Broad County, the county commission should hire a jail administrator. They give the budget to the jail administrator. Now there's somebody to answer. So if your son is in jail... You can go to that county commissioner who represents your district and say, listen, I'm having a problem. I want to know what's going on with my son in jail. He calls the jail administrator on it because you're a voter. You're important. How do you that, do it? That happened to me. Yeah. It I mean, happened. I, I lost it in the, the Marion County Jail when I went in there for the, for the, yeah. for the medication right? that I called in yeah. myself. I had a psychotic break. I, know, I've seen many of them, so. And... I couldn't believe it was happening because this was the last time I was in jail. Meaning, this wasn't the, usually you think the first time you're going to have something or the second time, but this was the, the fourth time. And I lost it. I thought that I thought they were following me. I thought they were listening to me. I thought they planted a bug around me. I mean, I. I you went crazy. I, I, yeah, I went into the shower with my uniform on. And my bag, and my, you know, the, the Diddy bag, whatever. With, with all my clothes. And I washed everything. I thought they were, I 
there were wires in there. I thought something was going on. Looking up at the ceiling, you know, the, the red, the, sometimes on a vent or whatever, you have a red light. that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's a camera that's looking at me. Oh, you really, you, you lost it. Dude, yeah, and when I went to, uh, so now I'm in medical, right? They got me in medical. But before I went to medical, I was sitting in a, in a like the doctor's room, you know, a little room where there's a nurse, whatever. And there's a cop behind me. And I'm just yelling at the cop going, fuck you, you piece of shit. You think you want to hit me, don't you? You want to hit me, don't you? That, that. And then after a while, after I started cussing them out and whatever, I said to myself, like some form of clarity struck. And he's like, I'm like, this guy could really kick the living shit out of me right now. So I got up and he like grabbed my, my shoulder to sit me down. I was like, no, 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 no. I got up. I went down to my knees and I put my hands behind my back. I said, cuff me up. Because I knew if he cuffed me up in around people, meaning we were still close to the unit, that he couldn't just beat, beat the it. shit out of me. Because I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah, there's I'm enough in the people open. that it's here. Right. And so then when I got to medical, now I'm sitting there and they're going to take my blood pressure or whatever. And this, this, this nurse, it was a male nurse. I don't know what happened, but they wanted me to sign something, and I grabbed the pen too hard from him. And he's like, guard, guard, guard. And here comes this sergeant. <laughs> and he comes up to me, and this sergeant built like you are. And I just headbutt him. Bam. <laughs> and I didn't know. I, 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 I totally lost it. And so they locked me in... in I guess you could say it wasn't solitary. It was in the medical wing, but I was solitary. I was by myself, and I was there. They didn't put you in a rubber jacket or no, 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 never a penguin suit. No, they didn't. I wasn't suicidal, or I just, I, I mean, I, I, I had dreams inside there that I was doing a lot of things. I was on an island. I had a dream that that don't worry, I'm coming home. I even took it so far as to where my lawyer had to come to the jail. And tell me through the through the hole in the door, you're not going home. I thought they were doing a movie on my life. <laughs> I thought that's oh, you, what I thought. you went real. I, I went real. And he's like, Brad, you got to take the medication they want to give you. They're never going to transfer you to the next to to the next jail if you're not mentally stable. Sound, yeah. Right. And uh, I even gave back my meals. I'm like, I'm not eating. I'm going home. I'm going home. I wouldn't take the medication they were trying to give me because in my dreams, I thought. I'm never getting out of here on this medication. I kept thinking like, oh, if you're on the medication, they're not going to make you leave. They're going to wow. keep you. They're going to keep you. I, and because of that, my mom came to visit, and they're like, you can't see him. And what you just said about calling the sheriff, my mom called the sheriff, and this uh, is ridiculous. She got to come in every day. It was over, you know, over the phone, you know, over a video conference, but he allowed her to come in every day. Wow, that's, every day that, that's rare. For like a week. And I, Lord knows I, I, I couldn't wait for them to, to, to come because it was like a moment of clarity. And they could see I'm, I'm looking around. I, I, I'm trying to tell my, my folks I got steroids in my room and you need to remove them. And I didn't know how to say it over the phone. <laughs> I kept saying, um, you, you need to check, uh, you know, where I work out. Uh, there's some things there because I, I thought they're, they're going to go to my house and they're going to find steroids. Oh my God! You were it, real. Yeah, I was. I was gone. Now, now, what was this in this? What what time was this? The first, not the first one. This was the last one. Oh, the last one. So, are you married still at this point? No, no, I got divorced in two thousand twelve. So I was married. But so, did your wife get ten years probation? Yes. Did she do the whole thing? Not she violated? Even, not even close. She violated? She ended up doing six and a half years in prison. What did she do? Wild wife you had. Drugs, drugs, drugs. And the last one was a DUI. She kept getting breaks for the drugs. She, she kept getting breaks. And the first the first time she, she violated, it was for cocaine. And we were still together, married. And I'm like, there's no way. How could you do a cocaine? I, 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 I don't do cocaine. I, and I'm the only one who's going to bring drugs into the house. Oh, she can get it. She was, she, she was cheating on me with her, with her drug deal. That year I spent in jail, she hooked up with him. That's and, not, that is not no, uncommon. No, it's not. You know? but, I mean, it is. What do you think? You think you're in prison. You guys are fucking every day. Now all of a sudden you think it's not going to happen? 
Oh no! I, I, it, it, it's it, gonna happen. It's gonna I tell everybody. Me. I know you're. What do they say? If you're in prison three years, you're you're gonna be divorced, guaranteed. Or Guaranteed. Ninety. There's a ninety-five percent divorce rate yeah. if a person does over three years. Well, my wife did ninety-five percent. My wife. Well, it's fifty percent on the street. It's it's and fifty-five probably in the church. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> I'm not religious, you know that. So yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, not either. I'm not not yeah. religious. But <laughs> no. I gotta tell you a funny story. So I'm in Lee County, and uh, I'm in a religious pod, and I'm jerking off on the toilet <laughs> at like two in the morning. Typical. I got caught doing that. And you know, we put a newspaper over to you know to I, let someone know. Yeah, that yeah. And uh, as I'm jerking off, I'm I can see the mirrors in front of me where the sinks are, and there's two guys that are like standing there. Watching you, watching me. I'm sure, like, that's fuck? normal. <laughs> and they tell that they tell on me. Oh, and get be, out of here! Because I'm in a religious pod, and I was the, I was the spiritual leader in the prison. This is fucking. I got great. to be the leader because I got kicked out of there and sent back to 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 the stockade. And I knew when I came back, I had to make sure because it was run by inmates that the pastor took the word of his spiritual leader. If you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing in there, he'd get you kicked out. And you'd be kicked out. Yes, kicked out. So don't tell me to kick you out for jerking off. Didn't kick me out. But what he did do is he, I wasn't the spiritual leader anymore. Explain to me why. Because everybody in there was jerking off. It's, it's, it's a Christian pod and you're not supposed to be doing that. And the guard said to me, this female guard, she said, you got a problem. You have no control over yourself. You you really got to look into yourself to see, you know. What. Oh, and I'm my like, God. Do you listen and to I'm like, And I'm like, give me, give me a break. Use that one. Okay. Wow. That is funny. That, that So, so. Yeah, so in the middle of everybody, well, there's 80 guys in there. The pastor gets out to the front, and he's like, um, uh, Shekman, stand up. And he's like, you know, you, you know, there's some unholy things that I've heard about in front of everybody. And he's like, you're not going to be the spiritual leader anymore. I don't think you're fit to lead. And the only reason why I wanted to lead was so I didn't get kicked out again because everything was like just... Re- re- religion, religion, Christian, Christian, Christian. Uh, Pastors coming in every day, two, three of them, listening to two hours of this person talking. Two oh, hours put me in the hole. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and, and you couldn't, like, they had stupid fucking rules. When you wake up at 5, can't go back to your bed until 7 o'clock at night. Can't touch your bed. Like, I can't go lay down? No, nope. you got to stay at the tables and sit. Uh, you can, it, it, but it was. But the the alternative. Remember, this is county. This isn't yeah. a state or or a federal facility. This is county. So you're you're doing dead time. You know, you're just sitting there doing nothing. Oh, I know. And there's nothing to do in that pod. I mean, it's nothing. nothing. Play cards and read. You know, and, and, and I read it. so much, and it was so hard to get books or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in Seminole when I when I was uh, in a halfway house. They put me back in prison because I told the director I was going to kill him. <laughs> That'll get you put back. Twenty-eight year old kid. I just get oh, out after punk. twelve years, and you know, hard prisons. I'm in the worst of the worst, and I get this twenty. She starts yelling at me. I said, "I said, I will rip your fucking head off, you fucking piece of shit, and I'll fucking kill you." Mm. He runs into his office, calls, calls, of course, of course, help, 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 help. I end up the marshals are laughing, right? You know, they look at my rank and they go, "Who the fuck this kid think he is?" And they're laughing. They go, oh, "He ain't lasting." Yeah, I didn't last like uh, it was a brand new halfway house in Orlando, uh-huh. actually. Seminole County. No, Orlando. Orlando. Actual okay. Orlando, and uh, off I think it's Bird Road somewhere. And I remember because my brother went, and I, and I was the first people in there. You know, first crew they brought from Tampa. Actually, that's where the halfway house was. Over in the, it's called Salvation Army. They had a place off near the, one of the main boulevards, and then they took the X amount of us to go uh, open this brand new. Boy, I, did, I was the first one in and the first one out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're going to close. We're going to go to lunch. Right. Uh, so how are you doing today? Today I am a uh, proud father yeah. of a 23-year-old, perfect little girl. One? One. Okay. She lives with me, 
And thank God I'm comfortable enough to where I, I don't work. I've been retired for, right. for a few years. And, I love uh, the, I love guys who can steal it and they're retiring for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many people that I retire know. being criminals, right? I love but it. But I retired and and now I'm living the life that uh, that I've always wanted to live, being a good dad and and. You like the Ocala area? Uh, mm. I, I'm not a party animal. I'm not a guy that likes to go to bars and go here, go there. So yeah, I like it. It's nice. It's they call it slow Cala because of the. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, this is slow for me. I'm a New Yorker well, in South slow. Florida. Vermont, and, it, these are small counties but i got right? beaches here it's a little bit different than the cow i yeah, mean don't get me wrong I, I was a horse guy i owned horses and all that and I, of course ocala's the horse cow matter of fact i told my generator guys in ocala you know it's the worst county jail in, in the in the, the state, state is what it, marion county oh is that they, no i didn't they have no commissary no commissary none the only thing you can get off there is 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 sugar-free candy and 97 percent decaf coffee other than that, you can buy underwear, and you can't even buy boxers, tidy whities Oh, man, yeah, that's not some, happening. No, no. no I don't do we that. wear two pairs of boxers, you know. To, I'd wear one. I didn't give a fuck who'd see anything. <laughs> I, we would walk around, but. We too, and we didn't give a fuck. <laughs> no, but it's a, a, it's a shit show. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're out. Interesting story. Uh, I know we're going to come back because I'm sure you have a lot of them. Crazy oh, stories. You're going to hear a bunch of during lunch. Well, no. T- yeah, I will. And then we'll bring them back and get some more stories. <laughs> Listen, I like when I bring ex-cons or people or who made, you know, made their mistakes. Listen, the reason I highlight that, whatever it is, what you did or a person does, is hopefully it shows somebody either they're in it, not in it, or tempted to do certain things. You know, you look at yourself. People are going to look and say, well, it's worth it. He only did that. You went through a lot of headaches, man. I mean, you your brain is you're a smart guy. It wasn't you, worth it. It you, wasn't worth it. You could have did so much with your brain, yeah. obviously, yeah. and not go to jail, not mm-hmm. lose all that, not the stress to go crazy, because that's what pushes you. That's what stress pushed you. That's what people don't realize. Yeah, stress that's pushed you to to lose it. Uh, jail is not fun. I don't care how you. Anybody who says first thing I tell someone, I go, you know, you you, you did uh, whatever. I don't care. Ten days, six months. How'd you like it? I've never had someone say, oh, that was a great place. I want to go back. Except my father. You're not going back to prison. My father. My father got arrested. On your case? No. At, at 74 years old, he brings a gun into the courthouse. Why would he bring a gun? Was, that is really he, losing it. Mentally, he was not there. And this gun, I gave him this gun. It was a little 22 Derringer. Didn't have a firing pin in it. So it didn't even fire? Didn't even fire. And but he had it in his bag. Yeah, but that 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 could be. He, he might have he might have been able to beat that. And he he gave he gave uh, he gave his bag to go through the metal detector. And of course, and they, of course they got right. And they arrested him. They arrested him. And I didn't do anything to it, did they? Yeah, they. Yeah, he had to plead. He pled out to uh, a felony. What? Yeah, they. Is this Orlando to, Airport? No, this is uh, Miami. This is going into Marion County Courthouse. Oh, my God. And I told him at the start, because I, I got the same lawyer, one of the same lawyers that I had used, and I told him at the start, I was like, if you can get off, great, but if you can't, it's, they're offering you a withhold of adjudication once you finish your You're year. done. No more he, record. Nothing. He was like, fuck that. I'm, I'm taking this to the news. I'm taking this to court. Da, da, da. So for like for eight months, I'm dealing with this. And then he finally decides, okay, I'll take the deal. So they had him withheld. They, yeah, but he didn't, yeah. Even, he didn't live through probation. He, yeah. He, he well, died. At 77, you told yeah, me. he yeah. died while he was on probation. No, he died at 74. My mom died at 77. Wow, young. Yeah, young. Uh, he died in my house. And uh, I just want to say one thing. Yeah, that, please. He, you know, I, I believe, I'm not religious, but I, I believe in God. Spiritual. I believe in God spiritually. And uh, I called my father at about four o'clock in the afternoon and told him what I'd be doing the next day, picking him up and what time to take him here, to take him there. Actually, I had to take him to his probation officer. And everything was fine. And then about nine o'clock at night, something told me to give him a call, tell him I love you. I'll pick, remind him. 
He was, doesn't answer. He answered, but he, 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 he didn't know who it was on the phone. He didn't know who he was, nothing. And he just kept telling me how thirsty he was. And I said, Dad, I'll be right there. And 20 minutes I got there, he was, he was going through terrible. I think he was having a heart attack or whatever, but he didn't want to go to the hospital. I took him to my house, and he didn't live through the night. But because of, of my belief in God, he died with me. He died at he, home. The way he wanted to die. He, yeah, he died with his family. You know, I, I always look at that, and I, you know, I had my issues in life, been shot, stabbed, and just had an open heart yeah. surgery myself. I had I a lot of yeah, and I had like I have three major, major surgery. I had. I, I'll show you later. And I'm a lucky guy. I mean, obviously, uh, I just got last week. People don't notice I was in the hospital for three days. I had a, a pulmonary embolism into my lung. Jesus, I mean, the oh. blood clot went into my lung, oh. uh, but. I'm just a bear. I don't give a shit. You know, listen, I don't care. But I'm never going to live like, you know, like elderly people who live who don't do anything and they, or they're disabled and they can't do something. That's not me. I mean, it's that's not living. I, Let's I, use the word life I tell and my, live. I tell my daughter, I, I, the way I feel now, I can't imagine how bad I'm going to feel. When I'm seven, sure you get these aches. To, yeah, I know. Believe me, we get older. You're 53. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So it's 100. Like I, I tell her I'm not long for this world. If I can live to 70, I'll be thrilled. And and then and then I tell her this as well, sweetheart. I think it's 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 proper that I go early enough to where I can still leave you a fortune. It's not the fortune, you it know. Is. It's what you. It's it's living a life. Yes, it's living. If I'm not living, I, why do I want to be here? Exactly. You know, I, I, talk, I tell here. people that all the time. I said, you know, in, in, from Nick to anybody, I say, listen, I'm a realist. If I had 20 years, I'm 63. I'll be 63 next month. If I had 20 years, I'd be fucking elated. That's 83. I mean, still, you know, work, yeah. fuck, do everything sure, I want. Sure, sure. But not 83 as an invalid. Fuck that. No, 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 no. But with that so yep. with that saying, we are done. Done. Because they goes, but this is long we're on. Thank you, Brad. I really had a, a lot of a lot of fun today. Thank you for having me. Lunch. All right, everybody, please. What I want you to do is make good choices. And <laughs> I think I hit the wrong button, but it, it's okay. That's Don't normal. Touch All right, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Thanks again, Brad. Thank you. Lunch. Thank you. Make good choices, guys.